a beautiful look there at Pebble Beach, the home of the first event of this year's USGA Esports Grand Slam Series, the Virtual Open at Pebble Beach, presented by Lexus. I'm Jeff Eisenman. I'll be your host today. And joining me on the call is Ned Michaels, who knows, oh, so much, our local historian of Pebble Beach right here. But when you hear that Pebble Beach golf links, what sort of juices get flowing for you? Oh, right. I mean, so this is, according to many, the godfather of golf in America. It certainly is the cathedral of golf in the United States. And when you look at tournaments, there have been six United States Opens here, seven majors, U.S. Amateurs. Of course, the Women's U.S. Open is coming here later this summer. But if you're going to win in the United States, Jeff, this is the course. You mentioned some of those amateur events match play. We'll have stroke play out there today. How do you think that affects play? Well, listen, this is not a long golf course. It's one of the shortest, actually, uh, on the PGA Tour, even by U.S. Open standards. But small little targets are the greens and always windy. This golf course has a figure eight routing. And when you start putting small targets, heavy winds, and a lot of undulations in these greens, uh, it's always a good test. Pebble always shows up for the big events. Yeah, let's take a look at what we have today as 10 competitors will go at it. They all had to qualify to get here. 18 hole stroke play. So Ned, you throw out all of that qualifying work, everything that you've done that does affect tee times today, but it's all out there. 18 holes, everyone's on even, on even footing to start. Yeah, I like that. You, you can kind of keep track of what everybody's doing and what your game is. It's, uh, I like that. It's good, especially at Pebble. And look, five of the ten players today are going home with something. Fifth place in a $100 USGA shop gift card, all the way to first place, a $750 prepaid gift card, as well as a $500 USGA shop gift card. If my math has that right, that means our value of the first place prize is a nice $1,250 today. Better than cornhole boards. <laughs> Uh, you know, that would that would up the, the value a little bit more as we take a look at Pebble Beach, just a historic venue that is now over 100 years old. Yeah, the vision of Samuel Morris and the goal of Jack Neville and Douglas Grant, the two gentlemen who designed Pebble Beach, actually was to have as many holes on the water or with water views as possible. And that's the figure eight design when it goes out and then you reach 10, 11, 12, it meanders its way back in and again these small little targets make for such a good test it is one of the world's best it was the first public course actually in america to be ranked number one and when you look at 17 mile drive this did not start as a golf course it was actually going to be a housing development they had sold all of the lots samuel morris convinced the board they needed to come back and make it a championship golf course so they did they bought back all of the lots except for the one where five green now sits well tell you that story a little bit later as we get into the broadcast but it comes from humble beginnings this golf course as you see the labor was sheep that's how they kept the grass <laughs> short but the first event that they had went all the way back to when it opened in 1919 uh, it didn't meet rave reviews there were rocks in the fairways in the contestants voiced their displeasure so they shut the course down they hired a proper greenskeeper and Jeff as they say the rest is history well those were the sheep a few goats have won here as well of course Jack Nicholas Tom Watson and Tiger Woods all among them now six US men's opens hosted at Pebble Beach five US men's amateurs two US women's amateurs and the U.S. Women's Open will be coming for the first time to Pebble Beach later this year. But whose name will be added to that list today? Well, we look at our 10 competitors. They'll be going out in five twosomes. French Connect, Thunderbird first, Jay Smithers, Irish King. The second group out, ECC, playing with Primer Lance, Master Hacker with F Magnets, Young 46, and Shalio will round things up. Ned, first thing that jumps out to me, Jay Smithers in that eight spot there, one of the favorites, he's gonna go out in the second group today. Yeah, he, he to me is, is, as you said, one of, if not the top favorite uh, technician, fantastic hitter of the ball in terms of how close he strikes the ball to the hole. 
And I think at Pebble Beach, that's what you have to do, especially if it gets windy. Because the greens are small with undulations, the targets become even tighter when you're coming to the greens with your approach shots. So to me, again, it's going to be a ball striker. So a player like Young, 46, who's a fantastic putter, he might be a little bit with his back to the wall, uh, unless it's really breezy. You know, then you got to look at a guy like Irish King, who's such a feel player. Uh, he might be able to do a little something. Young 46 qualifying in that number two spot. Pretty usual for him to go out in this final group and try to make something happen. And guess what? We, we could talk to him about some of those things that you mentioned, Ned, because we have Young 46 with us. He's got some time before he tees off in that final group. Welcome into the show here, Jason. And the first thing I have to ask for you is Pebble Beach. All right, I've seen you stream it before. Smaller greens, very unique feel to it. How does that suit your game? Yeah, it is a little bit of, uh, with the heavy winds, you need need a little bit of wind luck and hopefully you putt well. The greens have some undulation. There's some places you don't want to be. Um, but in the heavy winds, sometimes it's a little more difficult to avoid those spots. So hopefully get some good winds. Jason, thanks for taking some time to speak with us before, before you get your round going. Uh, you know, you look at some of the other courses, like, say, Chambers Bay, but especially Marion, especially Oakmont, that are very angular, they're very strategic, and, of course, the greens are just mean and diabolical. How do those stack up, in your mind, against strategy you know, with Pebble Beach? Yeah, they're really the same, especially with the heavy winds, and it does depend upon the, the pin set we get. I would assume number eight's gonna be the one to watch today if we get the front right pin. Uh, that's one where par is a great score. We, we could see some bogeys, doubles, um, could get nasty there. All right, How about well, an ace? You know, what do you think, Jeff? We get an ace today? <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Maybe on seven. It's always a possibility on seven. And we're getting into it right now. We're looking at French Connect, getting things started. What do you know, Young46, about this player? So, yeah, I mean, John, great player, fully. I think everyone's capable of winning this. I mean, there's such a talented field, and, and without the shot clock... Um, you know, players can get a little more comfortable and, and into their own rhythm. So, you know, I, anyone has a chance to win it. It's a really good tee shot. I mean, I find this fairway really difficult to hit, especially into a, a headwind. So that was nice. How's the shot clock affect your game? Uh, it, it, I'm usually a pretty quick player, so it doesn't really have an impact. I, I usually don't even look at it, to be honest. So, um it may impact a few people, you know, but we'll, we'll have to see. But we do have the easier pin here on one, which is nice. As we see French Connect checking out this first hole. So iconic, just a little bend to the right. That's Lob Wedge in. It's a smart, smart way to keep it short, but this is going to break left to right. This definitely has a little bit of break. Um, we'd rather be short right or maybe even just a hair long left leaves a pretty straight putt. So this isn't the greatest putt to have right on the first hole. Kind of sets the tone for the day, the miss or the make here, mentally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I can't stand when I par one, but it does happen. But, man, it's so frustrating. that quick and confident i like to see that well that's why we have you because we talked a little off air about the lack of a shot clock today you play so many of these elite events with shot clocks how does does that affect the time that you take does that affect your mindset and also knowing that some of these players are going to take their time yeah i mean i think you know for me personally it's like okay i gotta maybe slow down read a couple of putts you know maybe give it a little more time than I normally would, but sometimes that can also mess up your rhythm when you're not used to that too. So it, it works, it can work for you, but it can also work against you. You know, I don't I don't think we'll see Jay Smithers or Irish King take a, an exorbitant amount of time. That's just not who they are. Well, they're playing together, so they might set some records today. Yeah, they'll be done seems, in 14 minutes. 
it's one of those things that Jason, when you start thinking about it, that's when you know that if it's on your mind, that it's got you. Right. Yeah. You can do the, uh, the whole paralysis by analysis type of deal there and start questioning all your lines. Go. Yeah. I, I think this will be a pretty common miss today. You know, short of the pin long is a, a very quick putt down the hill. Yeah, see, this is a get, tough win for Travis. Getting a look there on the left side of your screen. That's Thunderbird getting things started on the first hole. These are our first two competitors out. So when they designed these golf courses in California, the golden era of architecture, as it's known in the 20s, basically, the course Pebble in 1919, they didn't have driving ranges. They didn't have somewhere to warm up. So when you look at a bunch of these courses on the West Coast and Pebble fits the bill of the first three or four holes were traditionally pretty easy because that was when you were getting loose. So you see a short par four, reachable par five. Ooh, yeah, that's a big miss. Yeah, what you hope you don't get on to is that 30 mile an hour straight headwind or you are going to be struggling to get to the green. It's par for French Connect on the right side of your screen. Excuse me, a birdie on two. And, and on one, trash, but again, tough putt. Yeah, there's that side hill for Thunderbird. Yep. This green has so much break in it. You, you think it should be an easy birdie, Jason, but it always presents, uh, it wakes you up. Let's just say that. It does. Yeah, I, I hope, uh, you know, if I do part, I'm, I'm not the only one and someone does it with me. But, yeah, it's a, it's a wind-dependent hole. You got to be careful with your wedges. If you throw it, you know, too short, it'll spin back quite good. So it's, it's a nice first hole, I think. Got to do your scoring. In the U.S. Open, U.S. Amateurs, Women's U.S. Open, you got to do your scoring at Pebble in those first seven holes. You kind of hang on through the back end of the figure eight when you get out to 9, 10, 11, 12, and you do a little bit of scoring on the way home. Yeah, that's, I always say Pebble Pebble doesn't start until the back nine. The back nine is, is really difficult. Good putt, Travis. So a birdie at one for Thunderbird. Took a little extra time on it. And over at three, there's French Connect. This is another long birdie try. Yeah, this pin, um, there's not a lot of difficult putts in terms of big breaking putts to this pin on three. So really, if you get it anywhere within eight feet, you're going to have a fairly straightish putt. And there we see a tailwind helping Thunderbird on the left side. Yeah, it's a pretty nice wind. I think he'll just want to avoid being pin high left because that is a big breaking putt. Hey Jason, the players birdies. will tell you that it's critical at Pebble to stay below the hole. How, how true is that here in the WGT, here at Pebble? Yeah, it's true on on a decent amount of the holes, honestly, just because when you do get above the hole, you get those really downhill and big breaking putts. Um, like number 11, we'll see if somebody goes long on 11, that is just a nightmare and brings bogey into play, potentially. Oh, great wind on four here for French. I'd say we'll see an eagle today on four. That might be it. So is it that, possible? Go ahead, Jeff. Is it possible to get too much of a tailwind on any of these holes at Pebble Beach? Yeah, like number six, depending on on which pin, really either pin, you, you don't really want a straight tailwind to the par five. You want something with a little angle so you can control the the release a little bit. But for the most part, yeah, I mean you take straight tailwinds on pretty much every hole. Yeah, I think I, like I said, it's not uncommon here on two to be short. Me personally, I prefer long 
just because this putt is a little I find these putts below the hole on two to be a little dodgy so I, I prefer to go past the pin you were saying <laughs> below the hole at two a little dodgy there you go yeah I mean you bring in a lot more break when you go long but it, it tends to play a little truer so I'll, I'll take the break um, if I know the putt read is accurate the fourth green is a liar. That green is just, you think you know what it's going to do. And you can, just, you can see French Connect misses it, and now he's got you know, six feet coming back. It, that green is always tricky. Yeah, it is not fun, and especially in the heavy winds, because it is sloped so heavy back to front, you got to really control your spin uh, if you do get like a straight headwind into it. And we see already birdie at two is going to feel like a par for a lot of these guys trying to win the whole thing. Good luck at five for the first time on the right side of our screen with French Connect. This is Thunderbird over the third. So far we've gotten what I would consider the easier pin so far. Or a lot Maybe of front the pins already. Yeah, I, I would say the front right on, on four would be the easier pin, but overall, we've got some scorable pins here. Oh, beautiful shot by John. It's taking care of business, Thunderbird over at the third. And same with French Connect at the fifth. Five birdies are ready for French Connect. Jason, what do you think is the target score today? Mm, with the no shot clock, I would say 18 19 is out there. I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, probably 18 is the number. Um, this is a horrendous wind on six for, for French Connect. Last thing you want to that back right pin is a right to left wind. So I wouldn't be shocked if he plays this a little safer towards center of the green, takes a you know 20, 25 foot eagle putt here. It's a pretty flat green, six. Make a long one it's, there. Uh, it, it has a lot of break. If you get pin high left or a little bit past, um, so it's a lot of break actually. Interesting. Let's see where he ends up. Such an iconic here, just, shot. Yeah, it releases out a ton, so I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, we could see it go all the way to the back of the green. If he tries to land at pin high, it'll go all the way off the green. Yeah, it's a good, good, smart play there. Safe play, especially with that wind. Thunderbird again, that working birdie strategy. on four. This is kind of a How big will the par fives? Five. Yeah, how big will yeah, our fives be today? Yeah, I imagine we'll see somebody, you know, Eagle 2, 6, 18, may, uh, you know, 14, probably not, but maybe we see somebody pitch in or something like that, but there'll be somebody that'll Eagle 3 of the 4. And there's a great look with the wind of where Thunderbird has to take aim on five. Yeah, it's a little uncomfortable aiming out that far. That fifth hole was St. Jeff in the introduction to the top of the show there. That, that was the one lot that Samuel Morris and the board in the early 1900s as they were trying to make it a golf course. That was the one lot that they couldn't buy back. The, the owner wouldn't sell it to him. Everybody else sold back and it took all the way to 1995 when they were able to 
purchased the lot and then Nicholas came in and designed this green and this hole. The old hole was this par three that kind of went up the hill, didn't really fit the rest of the golf course. And now that's where uh, Charles Schwab has his house. I know, Ned, you and him go back and forth a lot on your investments. Yeah, it's been an interesting, interesting run <laughs> recently. <laughs> Great look at the seventh, our first time looking at this iconic hole. French Connect with an excellent stroke. Heartbeat. Ooh. Good heartbeat. We got the tough pin here. Yeah. Gosh, it's so hard to get it close to that back right hole location. And then the putt is... It's so tricky, this one. It... it is, yeah. I mean, you know, if you land it pin high with a wedge, it's going to come back. But, you know, I'd almost rather have the six, seven footer back up the hill as opposed to a, you know, bendy little putt here. You see that, that video, Jeff, earlier in the year about the guy hitting driver off of this tee to like eight feet? <laughs> <laughs> well, that has to do with the wind, you know, as that is a great effort by Thunderbird, Ooh. but he's going to miss the birdie on five there. French Connect powers that by on seven. Uh, how deflating is that, Young, when you have a heartbeat tee shot on a hole like this seven and then miss that birdie putt? Seven feels like you should birdie it every single time, and it's very frustrating when you don't. All right, what pin did, uh, can't tell what pin we got on eight. Really hope it's not front right. Yeah, it's an unfortunate win by Travis there on six. Couldn't, couldn't reach. Meanwhile, French well, we connect. Got, yeah, it's the front right pin. Here comes the fireworks. <laughs> All right. No, no, didn't cut the cliff Speethian close. Way back there is French Connect. There's no huge advantage with this pin to getting it closer is not necessarily good because then the ball is just going to spin back a lot. So what we'll probably see is people on the front of the green or even on the fringe short just trying to give themselves an uphill you know fairly straightish look nice pitch over on six thunderbird Ooh. oh and that's no. just yeah that's oh yeah. no is yeah. right Oh, no, is right. There's nothing he can do to keep this on the green. This is hit coming the flag, off, right? No matter what he does. Yeah, I mean, you got to yeah. hit the flag. And I, I like that he's keeping the flag stick in, too. It's just such a small little target over there. There's, you know, there's, as you said, there's nowhere to miss. You just really have to hit a perfect golf shot just about. You do. Yeah, it's so challenging. We've watched a lot of golf in these events, Ned, and we haven't seen a ton of even approach shots land in the rough. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's the wind, and as Jason was saying, the, the greens are so small out here that you have to be the best with your iron play. I mean, you have to be a superior hitter of the ball with your irons. You have to judge the wind. Average green on the PGA Tour is 5,500 square feet, and these out at Pebble are 3,200. Uh, they're, they're significantly smaller than the average target that players would see elsewhere, e even places you know, like at Oakmont. Those greens are enormous. Small quadrants, yes, but not compared to these. Well, you think about the difference between the pinnacle of British golf at St. Andrews, the greens there versus the pinnacle of U.S. golf, Pebble Beach. Right. The 
Look at that. He almost made it, and it's just... Ugh. That's not bad, though. You know, Jason, we rarely see it approach shots downhill, but at Pebble Beach, you seem to get a handful of those. You do. Yeah, there, there's a decent amount of them, especially the par threes. I think, I think every par three is downhill. Speaking of which, Thunderbird missing the birdie on the seventh. You just said that's a hole you feel like at the start. You have to make birdie there, and so far we've seen two players come through and two pars. Yep. Well, the heavy winds just makes it a lot more difficult, and we got the more difficult pin. So nine we've got, I, I would say, the, the harder pin here. Just got to avoid going long. Long leaves, pretty tricky putt, long left especially. We'll see a lot of short rights here. Yeah, that's going to oh. be a bender. Yeah. It, 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 players will tell you when they have majors or U.S. amateurs, women's amateurs, women's open, even the PGA Tour event here, it's not just your approach shots that you're trying to keep below the hole. If you happen to pitch the ball, you're also thinking about leaving it below the hole rather than making it. Yeah, I could see that. I, uh, we'll be trying to make it, though. <laughs> of course. Of course. I hear a different story. <laughs> Going for the hole outs. Of course. Definitely. All right. Hole number eight again. Let's see what Travis does here. He's got a little bit more of a tailwind, not as much of a sidewind. Yeah, it's going to help it keep from spinning back as much, but it doesn't make it any easier. I don't think there's a win that makes this easy. He got the stroke he wanted. Oh, uh, that's not bad. He's coming up short, but that's fine. I mean, you could three putt from where he's at right now. It's just, this is such a vile <laughs> pin location. You know, if he and misses this is already it, fun. Up, yeah, yeah, he's going to end up with four or five feet, you know, below the hole. Very similar to probably where French Connect was. It's one of those, like, you can't ram it in. It's just tricky. Yeah, it's so awkward, isn't it? You, you, you know you, you're trying to make it. You know that the scores are going to be low, as you said, 18, 19 under. But you, you just have to give it respect. Yeah, absolutely. If you walk off with a par here, you, you know, you're either you're not going to lose a stroke to the field when it's all said and done. It's a pretty good lead there, but connect, connect, and it's a good spot. Yeah. Trying to get back on the right foot. A little left to rider for birdie over there. Oh, that missed Thunderbird. Me. Thunderbird. Here it comes. Just oh, a little bye, bye, bit of an overread. And look how that comes back. Eleven. Good old number eleven. Mentioned all about the approach hard. shot over at eleven. Yeah, you know, if you get above the pin and to the left, anything above the pole is just lightning quick downhill. Got to make birdie at 11, though. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of five, six-footers below the pin just to leave a fairly, you know, straight uphill putt. How do you feel about when you get to this back nine? You know, these first few holes in the back nine are a little bit different. You're away from the coast. Yeah, I mean, 10 is hard. It's hard to get the wind right, to get the wind and the distance right. Um, 11, you know, it, as long as you stay below the hole, it's fine. But even this, I mean, it's a three-footer, and look how much break it has. It's You just really hope. If you can get through 10, 11, 12 with birdies, you're feeling pretty good. And then we'll see about the pin on 13. If we get the right pin on 13, uh, very difficult to birdie. Very, very difficult. 
what a good shot at nine by Thunderbird. It's going to be a bender. A big wind in there. I have his mic on. I thought I just heard him actually. You're just joining us. This is the virtual open at Pebble Beach, the first event of the 2023 USGA Esports Grand Slam Series. Our first two competitors are out right now. French Connect, Thunderbird, 10 players playing this 18-hole stroke play event. Young 46, he qualified second going out with the final group. He's with us right now. And again, French Connect in the rough. 12th hole during the United States Open, the six that have been played here, is, is one of, if not the most difficult hole, that par three down the hill. You hit the right idea on 12. You keep it keep it short of the pin, you got the uphill putt, doesn't break a ton. So it was very close to being an excellent shot. Whoa, ball. That's a beautiful shot in by Jay Smithers, who is getting things going over at the first. And that's a great way to start. Just hope Josh doesn't take up all the good wins. He has very good <laughs> win luck. You know what I mean? Uh, tell me more. Well, I mean, right here. You're dead straight, 28 mile. Good wind on one. But how does, how does one have good wind luck i understand how it changes the hole but is there a uh i i, I would i would go as far as to call it yeah and he's and he's look at us he's he's talking to us i can hear you captain <laughs> <Right>. lucky <laughs> i would I call think, this sarcasm uh, i think he bribes champion i, I think he bribes <laughs> you know, some of the wgt folks but <laughs> Getting a look over at Thunderbird, playing the 10th for birdie. You talked to Young46 just a moment ago about how important this hole can be to start your back nine. Yeah, that's an excellent approach. I mean, left himself a really easy putt. We know what the pin is on 13. Oh, French Connect's already through it. Okay. Yeah, so this is a really good win on 13. You want anything left to right, slight head. Anything right to left on 13, uh, if you can get it within... 20 feet that is an outstanding shot so this will be a very common putt right here that we'll see today this 26 hey Jason, to 30 footer yeah if, if you could have one wind on any hole what would you pick what hole and what wind do you want like in terms of the most critical shot Ooh. oh that's a good one mentally i'd probably want a Slight left to right headwind on six. There's something about not eagle in six that drives me nuts. Interesting. Yeah, I can't stand not eagle in that hole. Which happens, I don't eagle it a lot, so. But it, I don't know, it's just something about eagle in that back pin. It, you know you probably gained a stroke on the field. That's a great shot in by French Connect that drifts away from the hole over at 13. Jay Smithers, three under, so he made eagle at two and is now coming up the third hole into a headwind. He's playing with good pace, too, but I know he, he likes pebble and very comfortable in heavy winds, so he'll cruise pretty quickly here. Ooh, good wind on 14. This is reachable. Ooh, I don't like underplaying the spin. Ooh, that scared me. Kind of when you don't well, play Jace, back, you bring that tree into play. Jay Smithers finds his shot on three about pin high, eight footer here. We're still trying to figure out where, is this the leave on three, Jason? Uh, no, that, this putt actually can break deceptively, so this is definitely not where he wanted to leave himself. You can leave yourself, you know, pin high, a little bit long, and you have a, a really straightish putt. You really don't want to mess with this false front here, though. Good roll. 
looking at the, the 14th hole. Johnny Miller, who won here at Pebble Beach three times, California kid, said that one of the proudest accomplishments of his career, Jason, was in tournaments. He birdied the 14th hole 12 consecutive times. What is your best score here, Jason, at Pebble Beach? Uh, 50. Shot a 50, I think, eh, three or four times here. Not 46? Not 46, no. Shot in the 40s from the closer tees, but only count the, the back tees. So I might have jinxed Jay Smithers. He's gotten two, two bad wins here. You just got to put it out there, you know? <laughs> yeah. But he got the beats. Did a great shot. Good leap. 15. Um, so, yeah, coming down the stretch here, especially like 15, you don't want to right to left. 16, uh, most likely we'll get the right pin. You don't want to right to left. So this is a tricky win. Just with everything sloping right to left, it can be tricky to get this tight sometimes you see a lot of people short left here and we can just see how fast Jay Smithers is still moving he's on the fifth hole now five under through four French connect on the right side of your screen he's now reached eight under through 14 Ugh, a little tuggy there by Josh. That's not a not a horrible putt there. He gets a little bit of a break, twelve and a half feet though. These minuscule details will make the difference, perhaps between you two guys later today. And Jason, you've now You've spent so much, you know, I know that I was there in Dubai when you guys met for the first time in person. I don't know if he was on some of the trips you've mentioned recently. What's the relationship been like between the two of you since you've actually, after, you know, a decade or so of competing against each other, actually been able to meet in person? Yeah, no, fantastic relationship. I just uh, spent a week with Josh. So he actually came to my house and we played golf here locally and uh, he stayed with me a night and then we went for uh, our, our golf trip with some of our country club members. So we, we spent a lot of time together. And he got all the good wins on the course, right? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I'm trying to think how I many, we only played together maybe two of the days is all, so. Because he was hogging the wins. A lot. Yeah. He hits the ball far though in real life. He can, he can get it out there. French Connect just missed the fairway over at 16. Yeah, we got the easier pin on 16, so that that's nice. But the 40-50 rough is going to make the shot difficult. Jay Smithers now 6 under through 6, so has a par on the card. Jason, is, is distance... A big advantage here, like you say, it would be at Chambers Bay or Aaron Hills. No, not really. It's it doesn't have the severity of uh, that maybe like a Chambers has, so mm -hmm. it really doesn't play a huge advantage. If anything, a lot of times hitting wedges can hurt you into certain holes because of all the spin you get. Interesting. Yeah, good point. The 16th green is pretty mean as well. Yeah, this is um, definitely the easier pin. This is a longish putt. But again, you don't want to be like pin high right, pin high left, or long. So you'll see most people try to stay short of the hole. Part of the, part of the, the beauty of this design, isn't it? When you get a hole like that, a, a hole location... At 16, where it's cut back right, and you know you don't want to miss it long or pin high, 
So then you end up leaving yourself this long putt because you're guarding against going too far, and then you end up, you know, not making birdie. It's just this golf course is so strategic in a lot of ways. It is, yeah. You, you got to be smart about where you put the ball. Oh, that looks like ooh, almost. Oh, 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 oh. So Jay Smithers came out like a rocket and now being somewhat humbled by Pebble Beach. I don't think he's made a par yet. I think he's just made six birdies. So not a bad start at all. Did he make eagle French at two? Connect. He did make an eagle at two, yep. So I think he's actually going to be seven under through six. We'll get a look at that in a second. French Connect giving us a look at the 17th hole with that back pin position today. That's the Tom Watson hole location. That's right. Oh, yeah, it's a... Actually, oh, Travis's mic's definitely on. Uh, it's a very difficult shot into a left to right point on 17. Not a bad wind on 18 here. Same thing, if you get the 30 mile an hour headwind, you can't reach. So hopefully it doesn't come down to somebody needing to eagle 18 to win and they get the dreaded uh, straight headwind. There's Jay Smithers. You're right, seven under through six is what he is playing the seventh hole. There's a birdie on seven. Oh. So yeah, no pars. That is that is correct, Jason. Eight under is his score now, through seven holes. Ooh, great shot by French Connect. It's going to leave a... Couldn't have left it in a much better place. No, it's going to be a very easy putt. And Thunderbird throws that to the back, but as you see, the undulation of that green at 16 brings it left. French Connect finishing up our first competitor to finish up over on the right side of your screen. The heavy winds here just make a massive difference. If we were playing in moderate winds, you know, most of these players with the, the caliber players would shoot somewhere between 17 and 20 under. Um, heavy winds, a lot of times, if I shoot 58, I feel like it's a great round. Very tricky. You know, it's, it's technically it's called Pebble Beach Golf Links. And it has the Scottish elements to it. It doesn't play like a Lynx golf course. By definition, it does connect one hamlet to another and is on the water. But when you get this kind of wind, it does have the Lynx feel to it, no doubt. Yeah, it's vicious. We gotta see we gotta see Jay Smithers on eight here. Let's a little look at French Connect as they finish up with a sixty. So that 10 under should flip to 12 under on your scoreboard. Thunderbird playing 17 at 9 under. Jay Smithers on 8 at 8 under. This is one of those critical approach shots for Jay Smithers. As Thunderbird puts it in tight on 17. Jay Smithers It's going to hold the green on down. eight. Yeah, he wants it down further, though. This is, if he misses this putt, probably going to have a, somewhere between seven and ten feet coming back on this angle. It's really going to go down that hill, depending on how much speed he plays. 
Number eight's going to be one of those make or break holes today. We've already seen a bogey on eight. Jay Smithers has a birdie putt. Thunderbird trying to get into the house and post something. But. And that is exactly what you talked about. That is a hefty, hefty par putt left for Young 46 as Irish King is our fourth competitor out on the course. I've five putted hole number eight multiple times. Very frustrating hole. How much of putting here, Pebble, is art versus the science? You know, feel and experience versus the math. Yeah, there are some putts you, you just have to know what they do, especially like that putt short on two. It doesn't really play like it shows. Um, there's a couple others that, that don't quite do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, good par on eight there. Doesn't hurt him. Really nice shot by uh, Thunderbird there. So Jay Smithers does corral the par there. Eight under through eight still. As Thunderbird finishes up with a 60. Another tough win for Josh. I, I really um, put the hex on him there. I feel bad now, but not really. Irish, Irish King <laughs> just won 170 <laughs> in with that yes. headwind on that. Excuse me, with that tailwind on the par five second. Yeah, this is a quick putt with a lot of break. That is an eagle for Irish King on the right side of your screen. But, yeah, is this a miss by Josh on the left side, Jason? Yeah, he's going to have a similar putt to what Thunderbird had. Just not, not ideal putt. That was a heck of a putt by Irish King. CJ Smithers really giving this one a, a longer look than we've become accustomed to with him on nine. Aggressive tee shot from Irish King into the wind and just gets to the fairway on three. Jay Smithers unable to capitalize on nine. Here's another look at that eagle putt for Irish King. That had some pace on it, too. <laughs> that thing would still he be rolling, so Jason. Firm. Oh, he putts <laughs> firm. Yeah, he gets running hot. He's not afraid of it, that's for sure. No. Irish King, three under through two. This is his approach on three. A little Something. behind the pin. Yeah, that won't be a bad putt at all. There's a little bit of a of a message for you on the left side, Jason. Jinx my way. I mean, yeah, I agree. I don't disagree. <laughs> Young 46, we're going to let you go in a moment to get you ready for your round. You're going out in the final group, second to last competitor today. What is your takeaway from that opening nine, nine for Jay Smith? They're so hot, eight under through the first seven, I believe, and then just two pars to finish the front nine. Yeah, I think if you can come in at seven or eight on the front and then throw up a good back, you, you got a chance today. Probably going to need, it's feeling like somewhere between 17 and 18 to win. Mm. Ned, any last thoughts for young 46 before we let him, let him ride? Roll that rock, my man. Let's watch it. We'll see how it goes. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right, good luck today, Jason. Thank you so much for the time, Young 46. Joining us this afternoon at the virtual open Pebble Beach. Ned, that's a, that's a big statement right there. 17 or 18 under, he says, has to win. We've seen two 12 unders carded so far. We're talking about 54 or 55 to win this thing today. Yeah, I mean, with these heavy wins, that's going to that's gonna be one impressive round. And obviously he knows what he's talking about, but I also wonder if there's a little gamesmanship in there of put some pressure on the field that's already out there, feeling like you have to birdie every hole and if you hit one loose shot or miss one putt, Feel like you've already lost it. Well, Jay Smithers just getting a putt back on 10, making a long one to get back on the birdie train. He's nine under through 10 right now. Jeff, I love hearing what Jason was talking about with certain hole locations, the wind that you want and that you don't want and how, how it dictates what you're able to do on certain holes. Well, I think we've seen virtually how nasty that eighth green can be, whether you're out of position on the approach shot or out of position on the birdie putt, as those balls are drifting toward the water on the right side of that green. Irish King, four under through three. Great start for him. That is exactly the start he was looking for, but a bender coming up. Jay Smithers, excellent stroke over at 11. Using the wind, that is beautiful. This putt at four is absolutely diabolical if you miss it. Just keeps on going. Oh, yeah, there watch it is. Out. The lip miss, and this is what we talked about with Irish King over at two. He is putting with conviction. He's going for it all. He wants to win this thing, Ned. He's not playing for fourth, third, fifth, even second place. He's trying to get the win, but that leaves this difficult par putt. The thing about that, and we talked about at the beginning of the show, you know, I, I think a technician, a, a, a ball hitter, so to speak, uh, is, is going to win today. But it, it can work for you, but at Pebble Beach, it often works against you in a lot of ways when, you, when you're trying to play on just straight feel and aggression. But if it works, you know, that's going to be that 17, 18 underscore, but it just, the greens have enough undulation the winds are heavy that sometimes you know you've got to use your, your jack nicholas course management <laughs> that's pretty incredible par for irish king to make it on a final rotation there at four seen off on the fifth jay smithers has a long birdie putt over at 12 Seen a lot of right to left win at five. Not a ton of left to right, but that's what Irish King is playing, and that's got to hold on. Oh, bad break. Jay Smithers, distance on 12. Just under Reddit. Right Just judging Ned by what we're seeing from Jay Smith is obviously one of the top players in the world who came out so hot and dealing with some of the challenges right now as he's talking about the wind. I I'm seeing 15 under as perhaps the winning score here. Even that feels like, yeah, that's going to be a heck of a good score. But, it, you know, it's, it's just, just you don't want to bet against Jason. If, if that's the number he really thinks in his mind, just like in real golf on the tour, these players, when they have a number in their mind or somebody sets the clubhouse lead, the rest of the players tend to get there when they're so good that, that they know what number they need. It does seem far, though. 17 feels like a pretty amazing round. 
Irish King with the chip in. He is playing all over the place, but as long as he stays aggressive, he's going to keep himself in it. That is two. Yeah, it's a big swing on four. And that last putt, you said the putt to go in the last rotation, the chip in there, five. And then you make your way to the par five where you pick up an opportunity for eagle. Not a great wind, as Jason was telling us earlier, over at six. Here's another look at that chip in from the other side. Perfect. And some nice right to left in it for Irish King, who's got the win to go after six and two. Jay Smithers' long birdie putt over at 13. And it looks like Irish King's got to get the wedge out again from the fringe, trying to chip in on six. Can he do it straight, two straight holes? I don't know which one to watch here. <laughs> Some early electricity as our third and fourth players are out on the course. Good thing for Jay Smithers is up the hill. And Irish King, yeah, he's aggressive. But again, this is one that if you miss, it can slither away from you just enough to be uncomfortable. I think Irish King's showing discipline right now, choosing to putt this, it looks yep. like, as Jay Smithers pours it in on 13 for birdie. Looking at everything here, goes back to the pitch, judging the green Irish King. Jay Smithers going into the wind on 14, so probably unable to get in in two. Yeah, and it makes that wedge shot, that third shot, so difficult. Irish King, how about the spin on that shot? Very disciplined. Ed. I like that. That's what I was just saying. Of a, you know, he's a feel player, and you don't necessarily associate feel with discipline. And that was he took his time. And look at that scorecard. I mean, that he's on a heater, as they say. Six under through six. He should think just one shot behind the pace that Jay Smithers was on there earlier. Smithers does with this wedge shot. Back into the breeze, little tiny hole location over here behind the bunker that is about 12 feet, 15 feet deep. Yeah, that was saucy. Green does move, but a tap in birdie on the par five for Smithers. Irish King playing seven. I'm, I'm looking at seven and 14, and I'm thinking about the 92 U.S. Open. Tom Kite won two pivotal holes in his victory. Of course, over at seven. Nice one there by Irish King. Stay there. Seven, he pitched in. Remember, the wind was just like this, Jeff, in 92, and Tom Kite won. Pitched in here from long and left at seven, and then a great up and down from the rough. He had actually put a lob wedge in it. At that point, no one really was using a lob wedge, and he threw in a 64-degree wedge and did Kite in the used it all week in the final round, used it like four or five times, and every time he used it was able to get the ball up and down. And Irish King, another good effort, just didn't hold its pace enough. It's just a touchy situation that whole location at seven. Jay Smithers at 15. Critical approach shot. They're all critical down the stretch for him. And again yes. in tight. About the Tiger hole location, remember? In 2000 right. when he holed out from the fairway. It's about where the hole was. That's a good birdie there for Jay Smithers. You mentioned 2000. Ned, Tiger Woods, the only player under par in that field.
field for the week, and he was 12 under. At the U.S. Open, yeah, that was um, that was just an incredible performance. Maybe maybe the best that that this generation of golfers has ever seen. It was just such one, a dominant performance, and everybody knew it. I mean, it was Els or Jimenez or somebody who said we're we're basically playing for second place. We're trying to win the the second flight. They both tied at three over for second place. And, of course, the as the story goes, Steve Williams, Tiger Woods' caddy, had been flipping so many balls to the crowd during the day that Tiger was on his last ball when he got to 18, but Stevie never told Tiger that. So he just held his breath and hoped Tiger hit the fairway on 18 and could then exhale as he came up for the 15-shot win. I think I've been a, in a similar situation before, but not because I flipped my golf balls to the fans. <laughs> what are you talking about? You've got throngs of people out there cheering for you and watching you when you're playing. What I mean is I have golf balls left all over this country <laughs> in the woods, in the water, and high grass that I just couldn't find the ball after. I probably have some balls left to Pebble Beach over the cliff. Jay Smithers on 16, and that is not high enough for birdie. That's a big miss. We will be unhappy with that. Irish King, long look for birdie on eight. This is about where Jay Smithers made his par putt from on eight as he pars 16. And now critical on 17 into the wind. Jay Smithers, that hole playing 223 net, slightly downhill, but that wind coming from right to left a bit at him. As long as you're on the left side, it's a relatively straightforward putt. As long as you clear the bunker and you stay on the green. Irish King does get that one to fall. That is a big birdie on eight, a hole that has given everyone difficulty so far. Lipped in on four, lipped out. His first oh, he, putt, he, the birdie he, putt, and then that one just catches the edge. He's seven under. He could be nine under. He could be five under. Right. He is fun to watch, Irish King, right now. Agree. ECC getting things started on one, just barely holding on there. Excuse me, on two for Eagle. So three under through two. The Canadian gets the start that everyone's looking for. There have been some lefties who have played well here at Pebble Beach. Get back to that first and see if Smithers can somehow sweet talk this one down over at 17. Stillwater Cove in the background, right to the right of number four, Carmel Beach. Easy work for Smithers. Gets it done on 17 as we take another look at that eagle putt from ECC on two. And now Smithers on 18. That's a great way to start. We've seen two players come through here so far. French Connect and Thunderbird. They both made Eagles at 18. So that's going to set up with a tailwind for Jay Smithers. 194 yards. He's talked all day. He's sent us virtual notes about the struggles with the wind, but this is exactly the wind that he needs on 18. Yeah, somewhere out there Jason is saying, see, I told you it's lucky with the wind. Irish King got a big help from the win right now on 10. That hole playing 500, but just 133 in for his second. It is a very, very manageable situation for Jay Smithers over here at 18. Landed a little bit on the front of the green, and it kind of funnels towards the hole from there. Ooh, kept it left of the hole, uphill putt. That's how it's done. So that's what Jay Smithers has to get to 16 under on the left side of your screen. 
know, he's a little bit farther back than I thought he was. It is an uphill putt, but as it breaks, it kind of picks up speed. So it doesn't play that much uphill. The caddies have a system out here, Jeff. When the amateurs come and play, okay, flat 10 foot, here's 100%. And then they'll tell you 110, 120, or 80%. So you can gauge kind of what the speed would be. And so while this one's uphill, the caddies would probably tell you it's just 100% normal. And he lips it. Oh, Jay Smithers just leaving one last putt out there. So he's going to get it to 15 under. That was what I mentioned was the number I was looking at. Jay S Young 46 said 17 or 18 under. If he gets there, he'll win it. He's just got to get to 16 under. Excuse me. There are other competitors I should mention as Jay Smithers has set the pace. Irish King didn't get it high enough. F Magnet still among those to go today. ECC, great start for him, four under through three, but in some trouble right now over at the fourth, playing his second. Not much trouble to get it, drive it all the way down here on four. Such a good little hole, that little par four. Ticklish little thing. It's a bandit. Yeah, you think you should be tapping in for birdie, and you can walk away a pretty sloppy par. Irish no, Jeff. King, good luck. Yeah, I'm looking at these two holes, 11 and 4. In real life, the diff, one of the difficult characteristics of both of these approach shots is you can't really see the landing area. You can only see about the top maybe half of the flag. So it's, a, it's kind of an uncomfortable shot, especially when you know how much spin and slope these greens can generate. That's a great shot by Irish King, who almost hold it for eagle. ECC, just this short hole, but left a bender for birdie. That's well done. Made him work for it. Now our first look at a lefty at five. Yeah, definitely sets up better for a lefty. I don't know if this wind helps or hurts him in the sense of, as a lefty, you can kind of use this to get it closer to the cup. But you look at left-handers here, just going back, say, to all 2005. Remember, Phil won, and Mike Weir, the Canadian lefty, finished second here at Pebble. Potter's won here. Phil finished actually second that year that Potter won. So a couple of lefties. Bill Mickelson also T4 at the 2010 U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. Irish King! Hey! hey. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> An ace for Irish King at 12! He makes his comeback! You can't make a hole-in-one at 12! Are you kidding? Look at this, Ned. We got on the left side, ECC almost made a hole in one at five, but let's take a look again at Irish King at 12. Oh, just inside, pulling it back on that 203 yard hole. Non-stop action at you right now. Our fourth and fifth players out on the course. Irish King, just like that, Ned, all of a sudden, 11 under through 12. You cannot count him out. No, I mean, you got to put him at the top right now. He knows how to win these big events. And as I said earlier, he's, he's not afraid of the moment. He, he doesn't back down. Some players, when they get a fantastic round going, they make a hole-in-one or a couple of eagles. Yeah, they start to get a little bit cautious to take their foot off the gas pedal but Irish King no he won't do that I'm going to say this Ned there's something Spethian about watching Irish King play yes it is an absolute roller coaster right yes, now yes good point I like that comparison I'm, I'm with you very good the Irish Jordan Spieth Irish King 1916 and right now on 13, he's going into the wind. Tough. Taking that 5-iron, he plays 195. Just a little bit less with it. 
He's a bounce. Did get it? <laughs> that that is uh, is not how you hope to follow up a hole in one. Oh, he's gonna chip it in. Don't worry. We saw this flop shot as he tries to figure out exactly what to play. We saw sort of a flop pitch over at the fourth earlier today. Excuse me, at the sixth. Jeff, I don't remember Irish King on seven, what he did, but on the fifth and the twelfth, he pitched in at five and he made a hole in one at twelve. <laughs> That's two par threes with zero putts, and depending on what he did over at seven, he might have made only uh, one putt there. But Good putt there by ECC for Eagle. All of a sudden, he's eight under through six. Watch out for ECC. I believe Irish King threw his tee shot into the back on seven and was unable to make that putt. Lipped the putt over at seven, if I'm not mistaken. As he whips this chip around, that's going to be a very difficult par putt coming back for him on 13. Now that was an unforced error. Take a look at ECC over at 7. Not getting a heartbeat. He's 8 under through 6, but a poor tee shot into the rough on 7. I'm all in with his casual look with the shorts and the hoodie there. I don't mind it. As long as it's washable cashmere, you know? That's the, that's the vibe at Pebble. It's, it's Cali. It's Cali. That's right. But you're right. He doesn't have the uh, Keith Mitchell uh, AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, cashmere Keith. What a guy. This is a gross putt over here for Irish King. I mean, just... Disgusting how much this thing breaks. You have to have the speed, the line. It has to be perfect and get a little bit of luck. ECC powers that chip by the hole on seven. Maybe a bit aggressive. Irish King, fresh off hole in one, trying to corral a par at 13. And he does it! Irish King! Wow! Stays right in the thick of it. You let us know what you want with that note, Irish King. Look at the card. 4-3-1-4. It's like Ned. It is like Birdie Birdie when you think about it on 12 and 13. But hole in one par he goes. And gets some helping win on 14. We haven't seen a ton of helping wind on this 14th. ECC gets the par back at 7. So he stays at 8 under. Another look at this putt. And I love the fact that he kept the pace up on it. He didn't try to die it in. I mean, he just took it right at it like we saw back at two. ECC's ball got to calm down. One of the great shots anywhere in the world of golf is the second at the eighth hole, Pebble Beach. Especially on a windy day, it can be the most punishing, but also the most rewarding. And it, what Jason was telling us earlier, into the wind at eight helps. You can take it all the way flag and land it softly. CC again not getting a heartbeat there. That's a good leave, though. That's exactly where Young46 said you want to leave this putt. Best we've seen. Irish King, that's his third at the par 5 14, so less stress for him on this hole than on 13. ECC giving this a long look.
fun. That is clutch from ECC. Another birdie. Nine under through eight. He can hit the. He can hit double digits before the turn, perhaps. As we take a look at Irish King. Taking a look at putting, taking a look at chipping, taking a look at flopping. He's got the pitch out. And almost got another hole out there for Irish King, but should give himself an easy birdie look. A look at his career, part of Southern England Lynx Club. He's made over $15,000 playing that game this game and perhaps a big payday today if he can keep up this pace. That's a birdie to get to 12 under. 12 under through 14. The pace is set by Jay Smithers so far at 15 under. Irish King, the fourth player out today. ECC on a better pace than we've seen anyone today playing the ninth. Love the note by WGT champion about Tiger Woods could just hit the you know just hit the button in the bottom right corner if he needed a new another extra golf ball on 18. I don't know if Steve Williams had that sort of luxury as his caddy in 2000. Irish King into the wind at 15. He has a hole in one on his back nine today. Gets a heartbeat. Will he get a kick off the hill? Get some help? There it is, funneling toward the hole as ECC on the left side of your screen gets it to 10 under. How about that roll for Irish King to tap in range? What a shot as we see Primer Lance, our sixth competitor, is getting his day start at one. That is, he might be a little too pumped up with that tee shot at the first. Primer Lance? Out of all, he's made over $1,600 playing this game. One of the less experienced players in this sort of event, but a great qualifying score in the top five in qualifying as he gets his day going. Irish King, six, 13 under through 15 now. And look at where he is aiming with this wind, or at least looking to potentially aim. Now comes back. Not going to get that aggressive, even with the strong wind downhill. ECC, an excellent stroke over at four, uh, over at 10. That is sweet in there. ECC 370 playing out of his mind on the front nine. And this to get to 11 under through 10. Irish King, who's played fast, really giving this a long look on the tee shot on 16. And now it is ECC Ned 11 under through 10. And just bombs away over at 11. He just looks so comfortable. I mean, he ha hasn't really been too stressed. Maybe seven was the loosest that he got. Moves quickly, and he's been pretty deadly accurate with his distance control and his spin control. Irish King holding back there on 16. No reason to bring trouble into the tee shot. ECC, another heartbeat at 11. Another one, Ned. How good is this? He's just been on it. Just absolutely on it. That's, again, an example of what I was just talking about. His distance and spin control has been impeccable today. You're talking about 11, where any type of miss strike or backspin that you didn't account for. That ball's ripping back a good 15 feet. 
Looks like he went full Space Jam and took the uh, ball striking powers of Canadian Graham Dillette. Old Graham Dillette, man, could he hit a golf ball? Holy smokes. And that is a costly error for ECC. Just blast it off the back rim. In cruise control to this point, that's a par at 11, but a missed opportunity. Still 11 under through 11, but we'll see how he reacts to that. I would, I would venture to say that was a... Just a brief lapse in concentration. You're playing so well, you don't you don't think you're going to miss that. You don't even, you, know, you don't give it your f full attention. Big, big shot for him at 12. And he doesn't get the heartbeat there. It's going to be well short. Ten and a half feet, though. Irish King... He sped through the first 15 holes, Ned. Now, it's a little bit more thought on 16. Trying to post, perhaps, the low score to this point. Yeah, this approach shot at 16 requires respect and a little extra time. Again, you're trying to fly it all the way to the hole, but you don't want to miss it long. And there's another miss. Watch out over here, ECC 370. That is going to shake some confidence. Two misses in a row. It's another par at 12. Heartbeat for Irish King at 16. Is it going to come off that ridge for him? Come off that ridge a touch. Okay. Nine and a half feet to go. Critical putt for Irish King. Expect him to take his time with that. ECC. Always one of the trickiest putts. That green over there, Jeff, at 16. It's just, just kind of a dishonest thing. You know it's going to break a lot, but then you hit it too hard and it doesn't break as much as you think. Like that. It's such so many of these holes, Ned, so delicate. You see that you see the card 16, you see the distance. We saw Irish King even for a second there thinking about if he had the win to go for it off the tee, but it, it's just not as simple as that. See, I don't mind doing that if you have the right wind getting it down there. Even if you miss the fairway, you can run something back there out of the rough. ECC is going to have his hands full over at 13. Yeah, I mean, it's, frankly, it's coming unwound over there. That little miss at 11. And that is another miss for Irish King. And, and, and now he is just... We, we've seen this before in some of the biggest events, Ned. The 16th green, we've seen players almost, almost want to cry on this green sometimes. as it is a three-putt bogey for Irish King. He drops back to 12 under. Just needs another hole in one. I wouldn't put it past him. Primer Lance is over at the third, two under through two. Just land this a little bit right of the flag. Use that wind of just kind of Start it out to the right. Want to land it right. It should come to the left once it bounces on the green. See Irish King three wood in hand into that wind, into that back pin position. Primer Lance gets a hard beat. Keeps it just below the hole. Yeah, for Irish King over here on 17, it's right of the flag, there's a slope that you can use to your advantage. 
all you that's all you want to do is if, as long as you carry the bunker you'll have a very manageable birdie putt that's a yeah, little bit off for Irish King yeah, and, and that's what I was saying is is th you just don't want to be long of this green. So just get it over the bunker. That's your main objective. And then you can have an uphill putt. You know, I understand why he took it on. He feels like, okay, I've got a birdie here and then eagle the next to really put himself in, in a position to potentially win. There's ACC with the birdie. Don't count him out yet. He's 13 under through 14 now. Jeff, I want to I want to go back to something that we talked about earlier with Jason saying that 17, 18 under is going to win. Maybe he believes that, and he probably does. I'm not I'm not going to put it past him. That's how talented of a player he is. But it also, when guys and players ahead of him hear that number, they start pushing a little bit too hard. And again, I'm looking at Irish King over here. Long of 17, thinking, okay, i got to figure out a way to make a birdie and an eagle. You just start pushing when you, maybe you don't need to. <laughs> Why not? Irish king, the hole-out king today on 17. He's 15. Uh, he's, I mean, he's 13 under right now. Remember, Jay Smithers got it to 15 under. So an eagle would match Jay Smithers. He has one putt on the par threes. <laughs> Just ridiculous. That's down the left side, hugging the left side. And again, another player who gets the win. Look how short that is. 171 with the wind in for his second. Now he's going to stone it. Absolutely stone it with that wind. And where he is what an angle he's created you're right i like your spieth comparison i'm with you on that irish <laughs> king hard to take your eyes off of him it is up and down two chip in hole outs and a hole in one today a bogey down the stretch a three putt bogey this a second shot in on the par 5 18th actually puts it by the pin yeah he probably, you know, probably not in love with that result Looked like it was going to be closer, but downwind got away from him a little bit. This is no we bargained for the eagle. This would be big for the eagle. A birdie perhaps gives him a chance to get into that top five, which does get some winnings, but an eagle would go a long way for tying Jay Smithers in the clubhouse. You see this putt made, though, in real life. It's, it's not one that's all that deceptive. It is who you think it is. ECC mounting. Bit of a comeback for him. He's 14 under through 15. He's probably going to set the pace. It's a really nice comeback. You're right. After the miss at 11, the miss at 12. Good rebound. Showing some intestinal fortitude, as they say. Irish King, long look down the hill, 20 and a half, 24 feet to go. That's the sloat house behind him, Jeff. Those hotel rooms, that bank of hotel rooms directly behind the 18th. It's called the sloat house. And they're big, beautiful suites that look down the 18th. And they're more than $100 a night. Well, I'll tell you that Irish King can grab some lunch at the bench after he finishes this hole. 
Yes, you can. Maybe even Good getting restaurant. around. Maybe even getting around at the hay. Mm hmm. As yeah, ECC. <laughs> ECC now matches the lead of 15 under, and he's through 16. Irish King, delicate putt, didn't get it high enough. Tell you what, though, it was an electric day for Irish King that included a hole in one and two other chip in hole outs. If you don't love watching this guy, you don't like watching WGT. Completely agree. He'll be in the clubhouse at 14 under. We shift our attention to ECC. Look at where he's aiming with this wind. And it still wasn't far enough out, Ned. Yeah, it's kind of a smelly little putt here, too. But listen, he showed me something. I think I said it was coming on wound form, you know, through 11, 12, the approach shot at 13, but he's, he, he really has hunkered down. Great chance for him to get to over 20,000 in career earnings in WGT. Primer Lance is on your right. He's four under through five so far. ECC to take the outright lead with this birdie putt on 17. Yeah, this is, this is a very deceptive putt at 17. You think you know what it's going to do. It's always a little bit faster. It just won't break quite as much as you think a lot of the times. Oh, and that one snapped on him. Tough, tough putt. Still very much in this thing. Two, mo two more strokes really out there on 18. We've seen Eagles today. And he's got the wind on 18 again. So 15 under Jay Smithers. That was the his score in the clubhouse. Have to imagine ECC sets the new pace right now. That is tough down the left side, though. He hangs on. And now it's full go. And definitely a helpful win. Again, I'm, I'm thinking you want to land the ball in the front of the green. And if it doesn't get there, that's fine because you're putting uphill. You don't want to fly it all the way to the hole. We just saw Irish King with that putt long at 18. It's, it's a tough customer. CC gets the heartbeat on his second at 18, the par five. And he almost trickles it in. That is going to be a tap in eagle for ECC. That was pretty <laughs> decent, I'd say. Oh, my. E C C in the clubhouse at 17 under. That is your new pace. Listen, I like the fight that he showed today. That tells you something about the fabric of who he is. May not come out on top, but he certainly earned some cred. Primer Lance, big putt for him. Eagle try on six. Got to hold on to that line. Never got there. Young 46 told us off the top, 17 or 18 under was the number that he expected to need to beat. It's 17 under. It's now set by ECC with that approach shot to set up an eagle tap-in. So Young 46 knows... He knows, Ned, he's got to get to 18 under to win it outright. Yeah, this, this putt for Primer Lance, in, in real life, you're sitting here going, how in the world did I leave myself a downhill, left to right, nasty little liar of a putt? No problem here, though.
to seven. Primer Lance has still got the Harbor Town Tartan going from last week. This whole plane just one thirteen for the guys today. Bold move with the flag stick out as Master Hacker is getting things going at the first, trying to take this tee shot over the trees. Here's that tee shot from Primer Lance over at seven. Doesn't get any heartbeat. A little short. Master Hacker, another stalwart in this WGT community. Trying to get a big win. Trying to add that to the resume. Primer Lance, a little bit shaky right now with some of these approach shots. He's, he's managed to escape, though. But has, he hasn't paid the price for him yet. a good birdie the great equalizer they call the putter master hacker leaves that a little bit short great look at master hacker coming at us Atlanta is his home Ned I grew up in Atlanta the ATL, I wonder if he's in the 404 or the 678. Probably have a few new area codes now. That city just keeps growing. Primer Lance powers this down the runway on eight. I think that's a smart move. Oh, it's almost speed like you're right. I think it's a smart move. You want to get it down there. Good putt over at one from Master Hacker. It opens up the green complex over at eight. Shorter club, easier to control, especially when you're downwind like this. I don't know if he meant to take it all the way down there or not, but either way, it's fortunate to end up just on the edge of the cliff. Maybe not that close. Master Hacker is going to be into the wind on two. That is not the wind he had hoped for. He's going to have to hit something full. Primer Lance at eight. Yeah, he's going to do well over at two. Master Hackers will do well to just kind of curl one up on the front of the green there. That's going to roll back on Primer Lance. It's okay if it stays on the green on eight. And yeah, Master Hacker pounding this up to that pin on two. And yeah! So good. So flush. Primer Land started par eagle. We've seen a handful of birdie eagle starts. That's what you want. That's what Master Hacker has a great opportunity for. I'm over here watching eight Primer Lance. Master Hacker is just wasting daylight making him putt that one. You know, we haven't seen too many kind of this far right over on eight. We've seen him just a couple of steps behind Primer Lance. There's the eagle for Master Hacker. Just 
It's not high enough for Primer Lance. Yeah. And here it comes back. <laughs> That's where we've seen him putt from, right about there. Well, Jason gave us the heads up early in the day. If you're watching, the eighth hole is going to be kind of the make or break situation. If you can walk away with four, you're doing fine. If you can somehow pick up a three, you're going to make some moves on the field there at eight. That is with more conviction for Primer Lance. These greens, they're at championship speed. Cut it 14.0, Ned. Poana greens, too. Not that it matters here, but it does in real life. They can, in the afternoon, get a little crusty and plant and the flower starts to blossom, get a little bit bumpy. You get fast Poana greens if you're above the hole. Very difficult to make putts. The true OG of WGT, F Magnets, is on the tee at one. Grandfather of this game and this sport, playing the grandfather of American golf, as many call Pebble Beach. Closing in on $200,000 in career earnings for this game. Represents Great Britain and lives in Brazil. A little bit short right on that first approach shot. This will make him think to putt. Yeah, it's a good place to hit your first putt from, though, when you're uphill, right to left. And left, Mags, it's just a matter if he has been practicing and playing a bunch. It seems to be for him when he is, he comes out here and always contends. There's the birdie to start for F. Max. Primer Lance trying to finish up his front nine with a birdie. Problem with where he is now, Jeff, is it, it's it's hard to make a move on the back nine like you can on the front nine. You you really if seventeen under is going to win you have to do most of your work on the first, really, frankly, 11 holes, but it, it, the front nine is where you're going to have to do your work. F Magnet's trying to do exactly that. Like Master Hacker, he is coming into the wind on two and has a heartbeat. Right down that runway. Gets the kick. Is it an albatross? Almost. Two gorgeous second shots back to back into that wind for Master Hacker and F Magnets. One of the greatest beaches on the planet. The water's cold, really cold, but that beach. Carmel Beach is pretty much annually voted the most dog-friendly beach in America. You dog person, Jeff? I I've become a dog person. I was not originally, but I've become a dog person. And when I was at Pebble Beach doing the 17-mile drive in December, I saw some of those dogs that you talked about enjoying their afternoon along the beach. Oh, yeah. You can let them off the leash, which sounds like that could be problematic, but the dogs are all so happy that they don't have time to be distressed by one another. <laughs> F Mags gets a heartbeat at three. How about this? Below the He's hole. On point. He is on point, Jeffrey. You're exactly right, Edward. <laughs> oh, sorry, did I say that? <laughs> 
F Mags working quickly. That's a birdie at three, four under through three. See what kind of wind he gets over at four. That'll dictate his play. Yeah, okay. Good enough. Gosh, he's just getting right on it. I love it. How about this? Look at this tee shot on four. Wasted no time. I like getting it up there. Now you don't have to worry about the spin at all. He can scoot something up. Primer Lance didn't get it there on 10. You talked about the Tom Kite situation, Ned. This is a 64-degree lob wedge for F Max. Okay, that tells me he's probably going to fly it all the way there. Thought he might take a little lower option, but never question F Max. <laughs> hmm. Well judged. How's his proximity to the hole here, to the first four frames of this round? Total of about six feet? It's a, it's a couple toes, I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's that fifth hole that you gave us a history lesson on earlier today, Ned. Yeah, when they bought it in 95, I won't tell you the price because I don't think that they... Because uh... we'll never well, get there. Right, correct. It, 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 it was a lot... And it was worth it. it Change the complexion of this front nine. And that is another great shot for F Magnets. It's not a hole in one, though. And with that, Ned, we have to bring in Irish King, who, <laughs> what a day. What a day it was watching this guy. F Max taps in for Birdie there on five. I said, I don't know, if we were talking about it. I said, you played Speethian. It was like riding the Jordan Speeth roller coaster with you today, Irish King. Two hole outs, chipping in, a hole in one, and the bogey down the stretch. What was going through your head today? Well, I was certainly uh, talking about each shot like Jordan Speeth does to myself <laughs> here. Like, you know, pretty, very much. It was uh, definitely a roller coaster, I have to say. Uh, 16 was frustrating. Uh, looking at um, Evan, ECC is uh, 17 under. It's easing the blow a little bit, so I would have to go birdie, birdie, eagle. But um, yeah, that was disappointing, but it was, it was certainly a fun round. I really enjoyed that, and I hope your viewers enjoyed it too. <laughs> Your style of play is, it's intoxicating. It's so much fun to watch. Does it sometimes, <laughs> heavy winds like this, can it sometimes work against you? Well, I, 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 I kind of, I really like that. I actually find that the heavy winds is probably an advantage because uh, the guys that um, use the calculations, it's a little harder, I think, for them with the with the calculations um, in the high winds. I, I, I feel freer. I feel that I can manipulate shots make shots i feel like i i'm a big fan of the high winds i i, I find it an advantage to be honest ned and um just uh, just a just a 16 probably just stole me momentum but i hold a few shots today and i can't i can't complain it was very enjoyable it was like we said enjoyable to watch you got speeth on one Good. shoulder you got griller on the other shoulder trying to calm <laughs> everything down with your game but we said it early on it felt like you were coming out aggressive right off the start two three four aggressive putts was that the mindset coming in was that the strategy absolutely jack that's always my strategy with these low events because you're playing against nine brilliant players and if you come out in any way defensive you're just wasting your time. You're not going to win one of these things defensive. You have to come out and attack it. We also have to play, like, you have to know when you have to play a smart shot. Like, I thought my tee shot in 16, there's a, like, was a clever taking the yarn, you know, where it's very tempted to take the driver and hit the pass. Like, so you have to temper that aggressiveness. But in general, I approach the game. You have to go for everything because you're not going to beat, like, the likes of F Mags and Josh and Jason playing timidly you have to go for it what do you think is the winning score at the end of the day here i'd say two hole out two hole out chip-ins along with the hole in one <laughs> is pretty impressive but let's talk about the hole in one for a second let's talk about the yeah. hole in one on 12 
All right, you you know we we kind of ECC at the same time put a, a shot in tight on a separate par three. I believe he was on seven. Uh, what was going through your head and what you saw there? That hole playing two hundred three yards today. Yeah, I actually I, I played that. Um, I practiced a bit during the week and I played that with a twenty mile per hour uh, wind and. I was came up short, came up in the front range, so it was pretty confident that the yardage. The most important thing was to aim far enough right to allow for the spin on the green, that because it was going to spin towards the left as well. And um, I was pretty confident it was going to get close, but I never thought it was going to get a hole in one. That's my first hole out. I think my first really long hole out in a live event. I was delighted with that. That was a huge momentum because it was the only really bad shot I felt I played was the put on 10. I, 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 I felt the put on 10 was a really weak put, and I was a little disappointed with that. So so that uh, getting a good wind and 11 got the birdie, and then the hole in one and 12 got the, got the train on the track scan. I was really delighted with that. As to your question there, uh, I think the winning score, I think Evan has a really good chance of 17 under. I was surprised. I thought it was like really on the hunt, in the hunt. Even with the bogey, it was saying Birdie Eagle that could do it. Uh, 17 is a brilliant score from Evan. Uh, it's going to take a lot of beating, but we have a lot of good golfers to come. Your approach shot on 18, as we watch Primer Lance on the right and F Mags over here at 8. Your approach shot on 18, did it go a little bit farther than you thought, or were yeah. you land where you wanted it? Yeah, I was like, that's a notoriously um, comes up short, notoriously on the hole. But when you have it downwind, like invariably, like if you have a side wind or a slight into the wind, you, you always club up, always club up in the hole. When you have it downwind, I I thought I was actually being brave. I was like, thought I was on the edge of coming up short. I, I really, if I'd done full spin on it, it probably would have been perfect. But like, it was 171 and I had 165 club in your hand. That, and that club in it of itself comes up short, the 165 club. I'm not sure what iron it is. But I was, I was quite surprised that it, it traveled so far. And then, as I didn't put that much spin on it, it rolled out. I was, I was disappointed with that. But, um, it's it's a it's a it's a quirky hole. It's a quirky hole with clubbing, um. Cause like I said, we're so used to over clubbing to get the distance. When you get it downwind, it's hard to tell yourself to under club it and let it, because it can dig into the hill on the front of the green and come up short, and then you're left with a twenty five footer. It's not. It looks simple, but it's it's not that simple. That little, just the little false edge there. That false front at eighteen makes that shot. Yeah. makes you think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that's the foot. That's it. It's the false front, and if you land it in on in the face of that, it just you get no run out whatsoever. I just carried the whole, the whole false front, and I I didn't put too much spin on it, and then it ends up rolling out twenty five feet. But I fancied the putt. I was actually kind of disappointed. I didn't hit a better putt on it because it's a very makeable putt. But um, them's the breaks. <clears throat> That's a brilliant putt from Lance there. That's a really good yeah. birdie on 13. And two pars on 7 and 8 for F. Mags, who got off to that hot start and is now 7 under through 8. So, excuse me, on six and, uh, on 7 and 8 making pars. Let's talk, we want to keep you here to talk about some of the action, Irish mm. King, but the two yeah. chip-ins that you had on 5 and on 17, <clears throat> are those results yeah. from just understanding the unique greens at pebble beach or could those chippings have happened at any course in this game just because you were being aggressive well in in general i tend to hold a lot of the pitches because i a lot of guys pull from the fringe but i i, I pitch from the fringe and i think i have the most hold shots and um, pair of ranked rounds in the game i i like pitching a lot and you might have uh, noticed that it's the one part of the game that I actually really do take me time on and i pretty much read them like a uh, but uh, I, I, I hold a lot of them pitches. Um, then the first one was out of 30, 40 rough, and you kind of have to make sure that you don't allow too much break because the spin is not going to affect on the ball. And I was, I was delighted with that one. The one in 17, when, once you start flopping the ball, it is a little bit of luck. But what I will say, there was very little break in it. I knew it was going to get to the hole, and I didn't have to carry it far. So it was kind of just landing it hoping it was on the right line and then when i saw the camera 
it was in. It certainly eased the pain of the three point sixteen, but I, I, I really fancy myself with every pitch. To be honest, I really fancy a hole in them. It, it doesn't matter what course I'm on. To be honest, it's a big moment for F Mags at nine. Yeah, it comes a mentality. Doesn't it when when you're off the yeah. edge and instead of things just yeah. make parts? Like, oh yeah, now I'm, yeah. I'm, I got a chance to hold this. Yeah, exactly, and it's a big boost to momentum as well. Yeah, um, that's a brilliant put from Magnus there. Super put, and that keeps that's him in very... the fight. Eight under at the turn. Yeah, it's very good front nine. You know, even though he paired seven, he wouldn't be happy with that. A pair and eight with that pin is. No, no one's complaining about getting a pair and eight today. Uh, it's, it's a good, it's a good front line. But like you were saying earlier, Ned, the, the scoring holes, eagle holes, are the front line. It's really only the eighteenth eagle. The back nine is tough. The back nine is tough. See, Master Hacker missing the birdie over. At eight, F Mag's approach. It's a good shot, but it's still a putt. It's it's a shorter version of the putt I had. It's it's there's a lot of break in it, and it, it's quite slow. And that's what got me today with this putt. I I just didn't put enough pace on it. It it takes a firm, committed putt to get this. Which is normally your style, so if it's if it yeah. fooled you, you know that it is a devilish <laughs> little thing. Well, Ned, like you say, that's in my wheelhouse. That's that, that's why I was so disappointed with it. <laughs> Me head sunk when I uh, missed that foot. You know what's also interesting is you, you mentioned the scoring on the front nine versus the back nine, how mm. the pace of play changes, especially those first seven holes. You just kind of rifle through them, and then yeah. you slow a little bit through the figure eight when you get out to nine and ten and eight, it, and then as you exactly. make your way, the green complexes are, are just they're they're. Oh, they're just so sensitive. They're just so small. They're just so small, the greens are, and you're, you have high winds. I think this, personally, I think this is the hardest setup in the game. Um, it wouldn't be the hardest course with lesser winds. Magnificent course, fabulous course, but I think this is the hardest setup, 14 greens, and and the wind speed, and because the greens are so small, and then, like, the slopes. But, yeah, it does tighten up. It's pretty much the first seven holes, your scoring holes, then when you get eight, nine, ten, Along the coast, there they're they're really tough. You can get through them. With three birdies, you're really you're really on the big back. Um, <clears throat> it's just it's just you gotta really be cognizant of where you're gonna leave your putt. Like you said at the top of the show, that you just don't want to um, leave the ball above the hole. It's like especially on eleven, like Jason alluded to. F Max has given this a long look at ten. Mm, sure has. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not an easy book. That's a great book. Well done. Now he gave that put the respect he deserved. I probably should have done the same. <laughs> <laughs> not your well, style. one thing we know. <laughs> no, no, go on. Ned. Not me style. No. <laughs> We noticed, we were talking about it, I don't know if you were listening to us, after the chip in on five, you were in the fringe in two on six, and you decided, yeah. you were you were trying to decide to putt that, you were trying to decide to chip it, and we talked about the discipline yeah. that you were able to have after just holing out on the last hole. Yeah, uh, like, it was great that I had kind of two, it's like it's a long hole, so like I hold out, and I didn't, you have to kind of, in this game, when you hold out, the adrenaline hits, and you have to kind of temper that because the next shot comes straight up, 
It's not like it's the one thing that is harder than the only thing now that's harder than the real game is that your next shot is straight up when you when you've hit a bad shot or or a good shot. You just have to like get the emotions back to playing, especially after the hole in one. I was actually delighted after the hole in one that um I actually stayed calm and and got me worthy on thirteen or on fourteen. But uh, it's yeah, the pitching. I actually really I was always gonna kind of pitch that one in the sixth hole. And I've, the fact that I hold the one before, I was really, um, really fancied myself the hole. I was kind of disappointed. Like, like I said to you earlier, I, I, I fancy holding all them greenside pitches. But I will, it does, it's the one part of the game that takes me a long time. I have to line it up, I have to judge the spin and the bounce, and there's a lot to, to take into account. But um, I was happy three hole outs today, so the luck was with me. And I, I would have said of all the places to make an ace, in my mind, the 12 hole is probably the last by a long shot. Yeah, <laughs> you hit it. It, was, yeah. it was perfect. Yeah, it just, it, I, I got the perfect wind. I really, like I was saying to you, I did a bit of practice and it just really looked good to me. Um, I, obviously, I'm not playing for an ace, but I really fancied myself getting it close. But when I landed and started spinning back home, oh, I went, that's in. Oh, that's that's a good pull from Lance. He hammered that in. Sure it did, didn't um, it? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was um, it was nice again. I think that might be my first in the hole, to be honest. Where, hey, where are you call, Where are you playing? Where are you Where are you right now? Where's home? I'm in Dublin, Dublin, Ireland. How's the weather in Dublin right now? It's it's, it's very bad. In prime time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not good at the moment. We we have to say we have been blessed with a couple of weeks of sunshine, but uh, April showers have returned with a vengeance. And uh, but the golfing season is start. Everyone everyone's talking about playing golf. You know, the golfing season is very short here, six months at best. So we're all talking about it. But uh, not a nice day today, no. <laughs> a beautiful place, though. Have you been there? Have you? I have, I have several times. Yeah, yeah. several times. Probably. Ned, how much golf have you played in Ireland? You know, uh, I've, I've played a fair amount, actually. And there's some crazy good golf courses out there. I mean, crazy good. Yeah. What, what courses have you played? Uh, Royal County Down played the... Um, yeah. God, what year would that have been? I played, I played the, uh, the British Pretty Amateur shot. there. Uh, a little Shannon, place called nice. Kakeel in Royal County Down. Yeah, the, 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 it's that same golf course to hope the Irish Open, I think. Is, that, that's a fabulous course. I haven't played it myself. That's uh, spectacular. Yeah. F Max again taking his time on 11. I think I actually did see where F Max. Yeah, I think he's above the hole. This is a very, this is a treacherous spot. Like if he misses the hole, he'd probably have the same distance again. And you can see the amount of break that he's allowing for the putt here. It's missing, but I think he hit pretty soft that where he doesn't. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty prudent putt that. You can't really go with that putt because that could, to be honest, I've I mean, 14 greens. I've seen that go off the front of the green. He lives pretty straight uphill putt for par. Yeah, yeah. So again, <clears throat> yeah, the mistake the there was just yeah, the mistake there was the second shot, leaving it where he left it. You know, he, he takes his punishment there. Uh, Master Hacker was a pretty tough wind as well, although it is the wind is turning into the hill. So you can kind of dead bounce it into the hill. He's hitting a pretty high club with low spin. 165, very inventive shot. Very link slight shot. Over at 12, mm -hmm. Master Hacker, excuse me, F Mags, that's the hole that you made the hole in one Irish King, and yeah. he is behind yeah. the pin. Yeah, it's a, it's a snappy break here. It's 
it, it's it's not an easy putt, and it, and it's although it only sell, it says down 1.8 inches, it's, it's pretty quick. You wouldn't want to put pace on this, or you'll you'll be leaving yourself an eight footer. But uh, I thought like the shot master hacker hitting there to 11 was brilliant. Using the 165 club to, I think he had 119. Um, really, really good shot. Under the hole, he's going to give it a due attention because it's a little break on it, but it is, you know, it is an easy point. I expect him to make it. You know, it's one of the hallmarks of Pebble Beach. If you think about the approach shots on some of the shorter holes off of an uphill lie to greens that you can't quite see the landing area. And so now the ball's getting up in the air a little bit, so it's windy and it's exposed to what the wind can do, and then trying to control your spin is it comes in doubt. It's, it's these subtleties that make this golf course so brilliant. Incredible. Like like you say, in real life, that, that, the wind that Master Hacker there had on the like uphill lie, uphill into the wind and you're hitting not a, a very kind of lofted club like it's very hard to take the spin off it to a green that subs from back to front it, it, it's just a, a certain amount of skill like it's, it's just a magnificent golf course I'm just and almost delighted every one of the holes game. back to front the green slopes back to front yeah. not all of them very, but almost all of them yeah very old fashioned in that way yeah, brilliant. What I love about it is the small greens. I think it's something that's lost in new course designs. Um, they're so eager to have loads of pin positions. I think the small greens is just fantastic. It's it's just an incredible golf course. Like it's the best there is. F magnets just off on twelve. Master Hacker trying to match Irish King with a hole in one at 12. Well, in all due respect, if he gets a hole in one here with this wind, this, this is a nasty wind. <laughs> um, I, I will give him, I, I will call him the winner, the hole in one winner. Because <laughs> this is, he doesn't have, see, the thing is, he doesn't have much green left of the pin to land it on. And so he has to send it in with little spin because he can't do what I did. He can't send it in with a lot of spin. I'll spin away from the pin. So it's going to take a certain amount of nuance. But after his last shot on 11, which was very nuanced, I expect nothing less from Don. That's not bad. It, it, it was an awkward wind. It was a quite awkward wind for Don, the Master Hacker there. And I'll do a quick pull. In oh, tight on 13. Look at that. That's an incredible shot to that pin. As uh, Jason was saying, 13 and 8. They're the two pins. I, to be honest, I'm going to watch the recording of that. I don't know how he got it close, that close on that pin. That's incredible. <laughs> He's now 10 under through 13. As Young46, you just mentioned Jason. He is mm -hmm. out our second to last player going off of number one right now. Yeah, and he won't be happy with that wind. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, especially Jeff, yeah. after he talked about the wind that Jay Smithers gets and how yeah. unlucky. <laughs> oh, he always compares himself to what Jay, what Josh gets. You know, what Jay, Josh gets. And uh, and he did, he did say he struggled to find the fairway, as I do, on this hole. And here he is. He's, he's in the heavy rough. Yeah, he's in the 40-50 rope, but it's still doable because it's the, it's the middle of the green. Um, it's still it's still doable. I would still expect him to get a birdie, but this is going to take... It's no easy wedge, but he can certainly reach it with one of his wedges. Speaking of wedges, over here. Oh, a little saucy, fancy yeah. footwork from F Mags. It'll fit, but this um, this putt will require his full attention. It certainly, although five foot putts, we do we would expect to hold them all the time. You can see this, the break on it. The, the dots are moving quite fiercely, so it, it will take his concentration. But Chris at Magnus is very meticulous, and it's one of his great strengths. <clears throat> How does the 
not having a shot clock impact your game? Well, it's strange because I would be one of the past, fastest players in the game. Um, but it actually, I was quite cognizant of it when they introduced it into the live events, especially for the pitching. Like I said, I take a little more time with the pitching. Um, it's, it's, I would prefer not to have it. But yeah, yeah, I'd certainly prefer not to have it, which is a strange thing, which people will be quite probably confused to, um, to hear me say. But uh, I would prefer not to have it. I find I can concentrate and take my time and the shots that I want to take my time in a live event. But in general, when I when I play in my old stream, I play like a hundred mile per hour. Yeah, I, w I would think just watching your game that you would want to have a ten second shot clock, and everybody has <laughs> to operate in that <laughs> format. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, I have won a co there, I think we've we've had a few private competitions with a 15 second clock and I, I tend <laughs> I tend to win a few of them alright <laughs> but um, no I think it's, it's generally a good thing oh wow that that's very good that's 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 excellent shot that was the best shot oh. I played today was into 15 Now, you were flying at the beginning of the round, and we were joking about who would play faster between you and Jay Smithers, but did mm. you feel yourself slowing down as you realized the score you had a chance to post? I, I felt, to be honest, I felt I actually intentionally, I thought I was actually quite slow the whole round. Um, I was disappointed with the 16th mentally. Mentally, certainly, it took me time taking the wedge. The wedge shot, I was probably not in the moment. So uh, that was that was the only time I was kind of thinking about the score I hit. Uh, but no, I, every other shot, I, I pretty much kept myself in the moment taking it. But I, I did slow down. I, if To me, it felt very slowed around. I was I just said, take your time, take your time, see the shot. Uh, I just, you, you know, you try to see the shot before you play it. And that's pretty much worked the whole way. And the only, I mean, in my mind, the only two really bad shots were the put on 10 and the, probably the first put on 16 was a little negative. Even though I I went above the hole, I, I just wasn't feeling that at the moment. But uh, it felt it felt slow to me. I, I, I See, I don't know how people see it watching, but I felt like the whole round in general, I slowed down. What happened on this 16th hole that we're watching F Max play on the left? Well, I was delighted with the drive. I took me, I took me time on the drive. I, I'm delighted to take the iron off the tee, put a little spin on it, so it doesn't. I was totally happy with the number I left myself. But just when the shot came up, I wasn't happy. 106. It was a, it was a wind that was going with the slope, so it's kind of hard to judge how the spin, spin would react. Will it, will it? not take the spin and then roll with the slope and then I kind of, I didn't hit it the place I wanted to hit on the ding and then left myself that awful nine footer left to right down the slope um, and I do, it's an awful but it's one of them you kind of have to go for it and I probably, I just went too aggressive I went too aggressive with it and then I missed, missed the follow up because I was too aggressive the first one, just a mental error, just a mental error but I got the, I got the birdie in seventeen and eighteen, but I pretty much knew when I didn't get the birdie in sixteen that that was it. I needed to finish birdie, 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 and I thought that that would have been a good score. And um, but I, it, it turns out that I would have the birdie, birdie eagle. So in in truth, I was probably uh, out of it the second I missed that eagle. Our second, I missed the birdie point in sixteen. But uh, it's a it's a tricky pin. It's a, it's a it's a tricky green. I don't know how it is in real life, but I, I find that very tricky green hitting wedges into. No, it is. I, I agree with you. I I feel like it is one of the <clears throat> the more dishonest greens out at Pebble. It's just, it, you never seem to hold anything, and you miss putts that you think you should make. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Like getting even the other pin is like the, the other pin. That's actually probably the easier pin of the two. The other pin is on kind of front right. And if you get right to left wind, there's just no getting getting to it. But I, I had no excuses. I should have burned you. I got the perfect wind, and I just just didn't play it well. It happens. We saw Young Forty Six just open with three birdies. By the way, missed the eagle putt though on two, so he's going to be feeling like he left something out there to the field. F Mag's big birdie putt on sixteen.
they, like you can even see the amount of time uh, Chris at uh, Banks has taken on this but it's just tricky when you go right or left of the hole no it's very good ball. and he gets that to Chasing. go young 46 almost sticks yeah that chip in birdie over at four Irish King we appreciate that you've been with us for the last bit since your round and I do want to say one thing because you kept saying yeah. oh well ECC got in at 17 under you make the birdie putt at 16. You make the eagle putt at 18. That's three shots right there. You did have a hole in one. You did have a hole in one and two chipping. So yeah. we'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. But just yeah. maybe yeah. some, uh, you may be a little push for next time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We go win the next one. And you made a lot of fans <laughs> in the process. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, th well, that's always good. But, Glads, thanks a lot for having me. I've enjoyed it. Enjoyed the whole show, as always. Thank you, buddy. That's. The Irish Jordan Spieth, Irish King, <laughs> who cards a 14 under 58. And as of right now is sitting third in the clubhouse. These two guys have a chance to perhaps pass him. F. Mags trying to keep a miracle alive with a birdie putt on 17. Young 46. Haven't seen that a lot, Ned, below the hole on five. No, yeah, he was able to use the wind to land softly, almost like a backboard. Should be a relatively straightforward putt from there. And over at 17, you're right, he's, he needs to make this and then come up with a three at the closing hole. This putt over at 17. It just... It just feel more relaxed watching players. it from home. Yeah, it just yeah. I'm looking at that putt, going, "No, you never make that putt on 17." Now, of course, that's real life, and it's not F Mags, but it's still one of those putts that you, you could hit it. You could stand there and hit the same putt, in the exact same place, and it's going to do three different things in five putts. You're watching two of the best to ever do it right now, lining up putts on 5 and 17 at Pebble Beach. ECC is our leader in the clubhouse at 17 under. That's the pace. So F Max really needs Birdie Albatross for a chance. Young 46 looks to be given this break some respect Ned over at five yeah you know, I thought it was going to be a little bit more straightforward but by the amount of time he's taking pretty indicative of that it's not quite as simple as it looks oh. and he gets a full 180 that was so rude and our first look at the number one qualifier, Shalio, in full British Jester attire. And I'm kind of digging it. So trying to back up that qualifying score does not get a heartbeat on one and is already going to have his hands full. Below the hole. A look there at Shalio. He's been one of the hotter players as of late. Just under 4,000 in career earnings, but his game is trending. I wonder if F. Mags has stepped away for a minute to get an ice cold Coca Cola. So interesting, Jeff, how this golf course flows through the 18 holes. Again, the first seven holes, you you know you need to do your scoring, but that comes with its own inherent pressure of if you make a par or you don't make an eagle at two, you, you feel like you've dropped one to the field. Taking a look at Young 46, trying to wrap up a birdie there at, at six. F Mags 
changing his line now with this putt. And just missing that. Shelly over at the second. He got the birdie at one. So now playing his second at the par five into the wind. Mm, 210. No problem. He'll, he'll be able to handle the distance. You know, it's, it's worth pointing out too, Jeff, that just how accurate the game is when it comes to the green complexes. Nice birdie for Young 46 over at six. And we saw how long F Mags took on, on 17 and how much time players are spending on the greens. And I'm telling you, on 17, that putt's just impossible to make because it it's just lies to you. And then F Mags misses it. You know, it just shows you just how accurate the layout of these golf courses here on the WGT, how accurate they are. Shalio using some of that undulation at two to set up an eagle try. Look at F Mags on 18. Oh, and that almost an albatross. Master Hacker just misses the putt over at 16. I thought F Mags would hold it. Yeah, it's not F Mags' is weak, but some of these irons that he hit today, just so smooth and spectacular to watch. Young 46 moves to six under now through seven. Well, this is the hole. If he, if he can make it through eight without any damage, I suspect he'll have something to say about it coming down 16, 17, and 18. That was nasty. Bad break for Shalio. It's a birdie, but Shalio and Young46, our final two competitors, both making birdies on two, missing out on eagle tries. You know, it's worth remembering, Jeff, that we're playing for payouts through the top five. So, you're watching over here, F. Magnus on 18. I mean, there's some cash on the line with what he's looking at for eagle. And closing in on $200,000 in career earnings in WGT. What an outstanding accomplishment for one of the true legends. Master Hacker, three wood out on the tee at 17. I can't imagine hitting three wood. I haven't played it when it's been windy enough. I've, I've hit three iron. But three wood to 17, I think I'd be laying up short right trying to chip it on and make a putt. As he heaves that over the bunker and everything and funnels it toward the pin with three wood. Underrated, Jeff. Gutsy shot in major championship history. The pitch shot that Gary Woodland hit off of the green here on the 71st hole en route to win in the United States Open. We pitched it close and then knocked it in for par. If I'm not mistaken, you were on were you on site that week, Ned? I was, yeah. That was I mean, gosh, late in the day off of Poana with the US Open on the line, you're going to pitch it from off the green? How different do you think that this course plays for a US Open in June as opposed to the PGA Tour event? in February. Oh my gosh, completely different personality. February, even if it's, it's sunny and, and windy, it's, it's normally kind of damp. It's rainy season, so the golf course plays long. Um, and of course, it's an amateur pro-am format. And then the U.S. Open, U.S. Amateur, what we'll see are the women's open this summer. The golf course plays firm. It's fast. The rough is deep. The greens are absolute bricks. Totally different golf course. U.S. Women's Open will go to Pebble Beach for the first time. 
later this year. F Magnets. A 14 under round. Just not what he had hoped for with ECC carding. That 17 under. That's the pace. Shalio out of the bunker at four. This is actually left for birdie. Jeff, the thing that doesn't change between the tour event in February and an in a open, women's open, U.S. Amateur in the summertime is the strategy on where you can miss to certain hole locations. And that does not change because you just know there are certain places. If you miss it, you're dead and you have to take your medicine. Master Hacker finishing up his round, and like you said, Ned, to get into that top five, to think about that top five, to sniff it, probably needs an eagle at least here. What a bat for the cycle. We've seen a hole-in-one. We've seen an eagle. Let's get an albatross. Or a double eagle, depending on what you like to say. It's What's a, your it's philosophy? An it's an albatross. <laughs> The double part doesn't even make sense as Shalio has four birdies. I don't disagree. Then again, double bogey. You know. That, yeah. th then we're contradicting that. Well, not necessarily because a double bogey count. Is, okay, it's I would say it's two. One over, two over. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Double eagle, I'd say, oh, that's four. No, it's not. Young 46, just six under on his front nine, trying to make a run here on the back. That's a good start. Yeah, he's way behind here. He's trying to shoot. Wow, trying to shoot nine, ten on. No, I mean, big, tall order. Master Hacker in tight to try to finish off that eagle that would get him into the group at 14 under. But ECC... You don't want to get ahead of yourself. 17 unders looking pretty good right now. Young 46 will need an 11 under on his back. In short, Ned, he needs to make all birdies and eagle the par fives. Yeah, and, and how are you going to do that with a 25 mile an hour wind? Green's rolling 14. Look at the slope just on this. Watch this break. <laughs> Barely gets inside that left edge. That'll work, though. Shalio. He might be the last hope to edge ECC. He's four under through four and has this tester on five. Five under through five. You know, Shalio's outfit would do well at a Ryder Cup. <laughs> You're giving some people some ideas for Marco Simone later this fall. Mm, that is going to be some romantic kind of Ryder Cup. I could see Tommy Fleetwood pulling out this hat. I'm digging the pants, got to be honest. Young 46 needs to keep making birdies. Shalio. I mean, uh, let's watch how he plays it over at six as, as young 46 thinks about this putt because he's got a couple options. Shalio, if he, if he wants to land it on the front, we know it's going to chase out a little bit. He could take the spin off of the ball and let it run. How good was that? And Young 46 just said, you know what? I'm taking the break out of it. I'm going to hammer it. It's the kind of confidence we see out of you, Jeff, on the real golf courses. <laughs> I would not go there. 
Shalio, second at the par 5, sixth. He's got to hang on. Similar spot to where we saw Irish King earlier today. Pay attention, young 46. He was Not trying bad. to make it two hole in ones on 12 today. Easy to get this one running away from you if you're Shalio. Oh. That was nice. That's Stillwater Cove right there, by the way, Jeff. You see yep. it in the background here over at the 6th. Used to be an old fishing village down there. And that's have the... Have you fished down there? I have not been fishing down there. I have been in the water. I have swam down there. Another birdie, young 46, getting on a little heater. He's taking care of business, 9 under through 12. In this area of 6, 7, and 8, it's known as Arrowhead Point. Standing up on 6 green, you look out over 7, it makes the shape of an arrowhead. That is not Jim Nance's backyard. That is the actual seventh hole at Pebble Beach. Mm -hmm. That's aggressive. Do it. And it's in. Shalio, our second hole in one of the day, and it is a big one. Six birdies to this point. Throw a one on the car on the card, and now he's eight under through seven. My my my! Now we got. Uh, fight. And pounds this down the left side. Got to slow down. Got to slow down. Okay. It's a good angle. Let's take another look at that hole in one, Ned. I mean, if you're going to make an ace, where better to do it than right here, seven, Pebble Beach. Young 46 told us, remember at the top of the show, we asked him, all right, maybe there'll be an ace today. He said, maybe it's seven. Sure enough. Two hole-in-ones in our coverage. Thank you for joining us right now. You're watching the USGA Esports Grand Slam Virtual Open Pebble Beach, our first event of the season. It is a stroke play event, 10 competitors. You're watching the final two competitors of the day, ECC has the low score in the clubhouse at 17 under, but Shalio making his name heard as he gets that up. It's going to roll through, but he is on the eighth right now, eight under through seven. Young 46 just lips that birdie, and then it almost does a sort of, you talked about Pebble Beach being a figure eight. How about that action? Holy cow, that was unbelievable. How did that not go in? Uh, this is a very big shot for Shalio over at eight. There's just virtually no way to stop it unless you hit the flag. So he's almost got to be thinking, Jeff, okay, if I miss this, where is the next shot need to be played from? Where's the easiest place to make a 15-footer? Meanwhile, young 46... Appears to have gotten the right wind at 14. Players who've had the wind at them haven't been able to get it in two. He can get it up there in two. He's going to need something special, like an albatross or an eagle hole out on a par four. But he's got a chance here. Shalio getting floppy. so hard to hold that on eight. No, it's impossible. Uh, and I think I said 15 feet. 14 feet, 5 inches. But he was smart. He did. He played it right of the hole. He knows he's going to have a better putt from here. Long, long eagle try for young 46 on the left. 
these are the kind that he just makes by accident. He, he just, he's going to go feel mode here, and this guy's so good on the greens. Massive par save for Shalio. His first par of the day, it comes after the hole in one. Eight under through eight is a solid pace to be on. He's got to get to 17 under where ECC is. I always kind of view this whole, this ninth hole. In, hold on, let's watch this young 46 effort over here. Hit it hard enough. Don't stop! Whew. Oh, that was so good, Jeff. I, th I thought it wasn't going to get there, but I thought if it made it, it was going to catch the edge. Young 46 definitely playing better on this back nine, but ultimately it does not look like it's going to be enough. Shallio heartbeat on the ninth. And that's been high. Tiger-esque, almost. Yeah, that was a good job by Young46. Seems maybe he's, like, a little looser now, Ned. Yeah, I think he said to us that he hadn't been playing a lot, and so his expectations were muted. And now he's kind of found some rhythm. But it might be too little too late by the looks of it. A look here, the comparison between perhaps our two top competitors, ECC, as Shalio misses that critical miss there. That was just a gnarly, gnarly putt. Hole high at the ninth is no good. You have to be below it. So we'll have to go nine under on the back to match ECC. The first tiebreaker is back nine score. Second tiebreaker, final six holes, and then final three holes is the third tiebreaker. So we'll have to get the back nine score of ECC to figure out if Shalio needs to win this outright in regulation or if he just needs the better back nine score. This 10th hole, you're looking right down the beach, right into Carmel itself. This neat little town, this hamlet. Cool little nook of the world if you've never been there. It has, there's no addresses in, in Carmel, in the town of Carmel. Good one over there by Young. 46 for birdie at 16. So there are no addresses, Jeff. There are no street lights and very few chain restaurants, if any. It's just it's its own little place, and time really hasn't touched it. One of the more quaint areas of the west coast of the United States as Shalio throws that on that right piece of the green, right of the hole, short side, inside, pin high. Are you more of a Monterey or a Carmel guy, Ned? 100% Carmel. I mean, I love Monterey, but give me Carmel. I just, I, I love the kind of reserved old school ambiance of the place and every time you go back again I guess I'm I'm getting more experienced we'll say some would call it older but it, nothing changes so you, you know where to go you know the restaurants and they have great little farmers markets on the weekend Katie's place for breakfast oh yeah I love Carmel You know, Jeff, they, they actually they had a, a law that they couldn't serve ice cream until Clint Eastwood became the mayor in the, in the mid and late 80s, and he changed it. I did know that Clint Eastwood was mayor. Oh, it is 
is coming undone here for Shalia. And I know the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am used to be named after Bing Crosby. Mm-hmm. It's a par for young 46, just 12 under as he gets to the 18th hole. Shalio, since the hole in one, it's been a struggle. Yeah, that was, you know, it's and what Irish King was saying after he made his ace. He was proud of how he handled it from a psychological and emotional standpoint, kind of gathered himself. Good look at the scores there. Young 46 can get himself into a tie for third right now. As we can see some of the stats, his longest putt just seven and a half feet today. Too much undulation. This place yields to, when the winds get up like this, tough hole location. It, it gives way to the ball strikers. Important note right now, ECC, his back nine score, seven under. So Shalio made the turn at eight under. If he gets to 17 under, he'll win, he'll win the whole thing. Because that would mean he would have a nine under back nine, but we haven't seen that today. Depends on the winds. We know 16 is bad company today. 18's been open for business, so the depend on the wind that he gets at 14. And then he has to just take care of business and hit some quality shots here on 12, 13, and 15. Every shot crucial for Shalio. Seven more holes to go. He's got to make up eight shots. He's got two par fives in his pocket. That's an eagle for young 46 at 18. Shalio trying to get the Irish King roll. Doesn't quite get it. Ned, young 46, while well, uh, this is going to be considered a disappointing day for him, with that eagle at the last, he finishes at 14 under, and that actually gives him an 8 under back 9. That's the best score on the back 9 today, so it jumps him. He'll finish, ultimately, he's going to be the best of those 14 unders. That gets him into third place right now and solidifies that he will definitely be in the earnings today. I give him credit, right? It was a little sketchy, but he fought back and obviously finished strong, as you just pointed out. And you know, the, the, the best in whatever they do, sports or business, just have a way of figuring out how to make something out of nothing. That's a miss for Shalio. And now he basically needs eagles on the par fives, birdies on the par fours and par threes. You know, not not dissimilar from golf, especially a, a major championship at Pebble Beach. You miss a couple of putts in a row out here, and your confidence gets shaken pretty quickly and pretty easily. And it's hard to get it back because the greens have so much undulation and break, you start doubting your lines and your ability to control the speed and then you get defensive on the greens and then kind of stuck in this whirlpool of doubt Shalio into the wind here at 13 that's not helpful at all this green slopes so hard from back to right. You see those palm trees behind the green. They're actually the only palm trees on the entire golf course. There are three of them. Hogan used to, off the tee, try to aim for that right one. That's about where Shalio needs to land this. It 
It is a heartbeat, so there it is. There's the roll. Still rolling. Well, it's, it's, watch this putt. Just wait till we see. Look at that. I mean, if, if you trip, you're going to fall over. This thing has so much slope in it. And, folks, that is not where he is going to aim. Yep, just wanted, just has to see the whole putt. This will be interesting. I mean, this is, gonna, this is kind of an all-or-nothing deal, right? If he misses this, if you're ECC 370, you go ahead and start getting set up for your interview and your winner's notes. Does he pit this hard here or does he try to lag it in there? Conviction. Desperation. Irish King-esque. And now this is the crucial play of what sort of wind he gets. It's a side wind, which we haven't seen a ton of today. That's got to get over the bunker. It barely does. Still 261 in. That this might require. But I was now just Jeff, watch this, this wind might now be a driver. Be this might be driver off deck. Yeah, because the wind's at his back here, and so now because of the way this this fourteenth slithers its way from left to right, uh, God, he threaded the needle. That was some kind of drive. And you're right. Might be able to do a three to to grab the three wood here. Anywhere on the green. Stay there. Now that may come back. Go ball. Oh, and Jeff, it may get up on top. How about the fringe? That's great. This is makeable. He needs to make it. And the question is, what type of shot here, Ned? Yeah, you know, it's just going through that in my mind. If, okay, yeah, you, you, would, you would typically putt it, but if you needed to make it, you'd take as much break out of it as you can by pitching it. So I actually think this is, is aggressive but necessary. Oh, he almost flew it in on the fly. Similar to what we saw from Young 46, now it means, assuming he converts this, he needs a whole out eagle or an albatross down the stretch. But you get an opportunity here. 16 with that whole location, not likely back right. Kind of depends on the wind. Well, listen, he's got a big wind behind him. This absolutely now eagle is in play here. Can he get it up there? That is the angle. He's going to give himself some chances. Oh, yeah. This is... I mean, this is absolutely one that... If you're just practicing, or you're, you're playing, playing with some friends, and this is one that the only thing you're thinking about is making... A little bit more pressure here as you're trying to win the virtual open. A little bit of cash on the line, some bragging rights for sure. Almost. So a birdie putt to keep the dream alive. I wasn't too happy with that one.
Okay. Keep it going. And now this is, check out this wind on 16. So we saw Irish King sniff it a little bit. It's a 400 yard hole. And he's pulling out a three wood here, trying to thread that sliver of fairway with, a, with the wind. Yeah, you, you, he needs to get this as far down there as he can. And you'd like to be hugging the left side, keep coming ball. It's, it's, it's fine. The farther down you can get it, the less you have to worry about the spin. You can flight something down a little bit. The wind at his back is going to help that also. So he can afford to be aggressive. And again, if he goes long, then uh, he goes long. He, he only has one thing on his mind here. He's, he's trying to track down 17 under. Gorgeous. Another good look at it. But this is the green that tripped up some players. Irish King to name one big one. This is the ideal spot from which to putt here on 16. Up the hill, there isn't a whole lot of movement. This is this is cake for Shally Oak. Well, Jeff, I guess if you show up in that outfit, <laughs> you have to do something dramatic on 17 and 18, don't you? Birdie Eagle won't be enough. Has to either make a hole-in-one here or an albatross at 18. Yeah, this wind does not help here. Very easy to knock it through the back of the green downwind like this. Working quickly. And a very good shot, nonetheless. Just not what Shalio had hoped for. Sensitive little putt here, but he'll just go ahead and bang it right in, given the situation. Well, good wind for the tee shot. It'll keep it... You can take it as aggressively as he wants down the left and the wind will work it back to the fairway. It's not going to help him though with the second shot. Here we go. Needs to hold this for the win. If he misses, ECC 370 is your virtual open Pebble Beach champion. It's a practice swing. This is the real thing. Heartbeat. Playing the wind is Shalio. And just didn't come back enough. So it comes all the way down to the end with Shalio, the number one qualifier. He can still make this putt for second place on his own, but it is ECC 370 getting the win at our first USGA Esports Grand Slam event. Gutsy, gutsy performance from ECC. Big putt here. How good was Shalio the last seven holes? That was spectacular, strong stuff. ECC 370 of Canada is your champion of the Esports Grand Slam Virtual Open at Pebble Beach. Our USGA, first USGA Esports event of the season presented by Lexus played here in WGT. And we are getting... ECC 370 on the line for the winner's interview went out 
a little bit early in that middle wave and posted a score that made everyone think and perhaps think a little bit too much today, Ned. As we take a look, 17 under. That was what Young46 told us at the beginning. 17 or 18 under, he said, would win it. He was right in that regard. As ECC370 gets the win by one, and we bring Evan in to talk with us about it. Congrats on the win. We'll see if the Leafs can do it. We'll see if you get the double. That's asking I for a so. lot. That's asking it's for a, a lot. A, but what you... It's an omen. I can feel it. <laughs> well, maybe they can take from that. But something was right for you today. You know, we've seen you in a lot of these big events. Sometimes your name falls lit a bit by the wayside, but today you were right up there with the top. What clicked for you at Pebble Beach? Yeah, I just, uh, I told myself to stay focused, take your time. I usually play really fast and there was no shot clock. So I knew that I could take my time and really think about the shots and the putts and like just don't be afraid to take that extra 10 seconds if you need it. Um, you know, especially after you, you, you get hot early on, uh, you know, you want to keep it going. You don't want to mess it up. So that was a big part of it. And here was your yeah, three eagles on your round. And we're looking at a few of them. How did you take advantage of these par fives in particular? Yeah, I mean, I can't deny that I had a great win set. I wasn't too happy with the final shot on 18 I really didn't like the number I wasn't sure you know is this gonna be the classic fall short of the green or is it gonna bounce at the pin and run long like I think you saw a lot of people do today um, just lucky enough for me it worked out it's not always that I could hit that same shot 10 times and you know seven times out of 10 it, I won't get those heartbeats I think I said something along the lines of it's coming unwound for you uh, when you were on 11 you missed the putt and then over on 12 as well and then 13 you were kind of far away how did you mentally regroup i mean you hate to do it those four or five foot short putts but everyone misses them and i've missed them before i will miss them again so i just told myself like just stay focused you're doing okay by the end of the round i was concerned that might cost me the win i kind of had this feeling you needed 18 under but you know, I got it done. For you in particular, how does this build confidence? Like I said, your name has been up there, your name has been up there, but it's number one today. What does that mean as we enter sort of the meat of the WGT season? I mean, it's great to get a win the first event of the summer. So, you know, hopefully we can build off this and uh, keep making it to these events. Hope you guys didn't forget about me. I know I haven't been here in a while, but hey, I'm still one of the best. <laughs> What, what are you going to do with all your winnings here? I mean, you, you got some credit now. You're going to get right online. We got the U.S. Open at Los Angeles Country Club. The women's U.S. Open is right here at Pebble Beach. No idea. I haven't thought that far yet, but uh, I've already got so much swag from the USGA gift shop. So I guess we're going to be getting a lot more swag now, too. Here's the important question. You got the Leafs jersey. The Stanley Cup playoffs are going on right now. Do those extra juices, was that was that a little bit of that competitive edge factoring in today? I mean, I'm going out to watch the game tonight with my friends, so we were celebrating something. Either way, at least I definitely have something to celebrate right now. Well, at least Ned, he's, he can, he can, you know, maybe not, maybe take the prepaid card or maybe take the USGA gear and, you know, you can tell your friends, I'm buying at least a few polo shirts or something out here. <laughs> First round's on me, that's for sure. <laughs> ECC 370, you are our champion of the virtual open at Pebble Beach. Congratulations. Thank you so much for doing this. We expect to see you at the next three events as well this season. Absolutely. Thanks, fellas. Really enjoyed it. Congratulations. Great playing. <laughs> and don't spend that all in one place, Ned, right? Except actually spend it all in the shop, the, the shop portion of it. Where, where else would you? I mean, some good logos, too. You know, with this, this particular championship season for the USGA, that LACC logo with the flag and then Pebble Beach, it's hard to beat. We continue to see in WGT, in these USGA esports Grand Slam events in particular, we see the parity continue to be there. ECC, 
maybe not the name that everyone would have had at the top. They would have said, you know, I could see him cracking the top five of this group of 10, but today he was the star. How do you notice that as this leaderboard fluctuated throughout the day? Well, he did mention the wind set that he got was beneficial, but this was one of the most, I guess, volatile events, Jeff, that we've had the privilege uh, of calling here on WGT for the USGA because of the heavy winds, because it's Pebble Beach, small little targets, and you looked at where some of the holes were cut. Just look at number eight, for example. We saw a bogey or two. We saw some grinding for par. That's not always the case. So again, wind, small greens, and it's Pebble Beach comes with a little extra weight. So I enjoyed this immensely. And yet 17 under was still the score to beat. A couple of those guys. So Shalio ultimately finishes second. Jay Smithers, young 46, master hacker. As you go down the line, F Magnet's just out of it. As we take a look at some of the, the highlights, this was Thunderbird early on getting out there. What were some of your early impressions of this particular Pebble Beach track early on today? Well, I think, you know, it was so cool to to be able to have Young 46 with us in that kind of opening part of the show because he was able to give us some insights on, for example, there at two, you don't want to come up short at eight. That's such a tough one here at five. He said you'd see some action. And so having him early on set the stage for us, I'm just letting you know where the opportunities were. This didn't seem like one, (laughs) but it was. It was an ace at the 12th. Come on. This was our eventual champion, ECC, on six. That was an eagle. That was his second eagle of the day. Got him to eight under through six. That's when you really started to see that he was going to set the pace. He said he didn't like the wind here at 18, hitting his second shot to kick in range, his third eagle of the day. And he waited a long time at 17 under to watch the rest of the field. Had to sweat it out, and the big names so to speak were behind him and one by one they just fell to the wayside they didn't have quite enough firepower here at seven though we thought okay here comes the man Chalio with an ace at the par three but it just Jeff it just shows you how good ECC was today yeah, Shalio was the number one qualifier Shalio at that point got to eight under through seven And in typical Pebble Beach form, Ned, and you talked about it, those first seven holes, you got to score early. You can't ease into the round because 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, those eight some players up. Yeah, and and trying to make a comeback. When you get behind at Pebble Beach, you, you need to stay patient. And in this format, you can't stay patient. So then you're trying to force the envelope and walk this tightrope of perfection and inevitably the last nine holes at Pebble Beach there is no such thing as perfection you have to play to the right spots and hope you make a few long putts so when you're behind it's it's nearly impossible to make that big of a charge uh, coming down those last nine holes but for sure the last kind of five or six holes we heard some great things, great insight from Young46 and Irish King on the broadcast. We appreciate them stopping by with us. And it also makes you think a little as we head in to the remainder of these events in this USGA Esports Grand Slam series. What do players have to adjust? What do they have to do? Maybe it's putting. Maybe it's judging the wind. Maybe it's judging certain speeds. What should players, especially those aspirational players, be focused on as this year progresses? You know, all those things are right, Jeff. But the USGA prides themselves on keeping the players and their championships on their toes, almost kind of guessing, having to be able to have the mental flexibility, but also the mental fortitude to be able to handle curveballs. And so my advice would be get yourself mentally ready so that nothing bothers you. You know, you look at ECC on the last hole, for example, he said, I had a horrible number. I didn't like that number. I was uncomfortable with the shot. Well, guess what? You become comfortable being uncomfortable that's how you win usga championships so basically you can't you can't do anything you just hope for the best is uh you is mentally prepare what... for everything that's exactly Pray and right. hope <laughs> is is a short way of talking about participating in usga events well ned it was a pleasure going through this for the last three hours it was it's been a while you know we're glad to get back in the saddle and do these USGA Esports Grand Slam Series events once again. This was the virtual open at Pebble Beach presented by Lexus and ECC 370 
is your first champion of the year. Thank you to everyone out there in the Twitch, YouTube, Twitter sphere for watching today. That's Ned Michaels. I am Jeff Eisenman, and we will see you next time at the USGA Esports Grand Slam Series.